minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. You ready for do do more in the future? Trap yes. talk podcasts? Yes. Man, only, only trap talk exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. From the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, gotta love it, love it, and not I'm hot from the hop to the club to spot. Get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up. You are now tapped into the coolest reptile podcast in the world. I'm your boy, MJ. Welcome to the Trap Talk podcast. Tonight, we are live and direct with the one and only Joel Woolsey of <laughs> State 48 Exotics. My man, Ooh, dude. Yeah. Give me a hug. Yeah. My yeah. boy, dog. Oh, man, if, man. You want, if you want to talk about OG homies that I've looked up to in the game, like, man, and it, on top of being one of the OGs in the game, you are a part of Miguel's original crew back in the show era, uh, back when we were all linking up at shows. Yeah, um, yeah. Which, which we have a lot to catch up on tonight, Joel. Like, dude. it's been a while, my man. It yeah, really has. it's been a minute, dude. Been been away from the show scene, I feel like. Right. Lame. Uh, upset about that, dude. So A lot of life has been happening for you. A lot of life, dude. There's been a lot of moving parts. Yeah, right. yeah. We moved. We moved. Uh, so that was a big thing. Got married, you know. Yeah. All those bought a house, you know. I'm doing all those like adult things, that, adulting, dude. I never had any interest in, to be honest. And then now here I am, just doing it. So <laughs> yeah, well, dude. Here it's we been are. Fun. Here we are, guys. I want to say before we get into things, uh, tonight's episode is brought to you by uh, Matt Byram. <laughs> Good old Matt Byram from Matt Byram Exotics. Yeah. Please go give my boy Matt a follow on Instagram. What a guy. Yeah, <laughs> one of my favorite people, to be honest. Like, what a seriously, he's, one of my favorite people. He is that guy is the most ride or die dude. He's uh, he is a absolute ride at the shows. So much fun. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm a big fan. Matt, you're missed, buddy. Um, listen, at the end of the day, um, you know, Matt is um, I don't want to say he's making a comeback, but dude, he's been posting a lot lately. It looks like uh, it looks like he, he he's gonna be surfacing. From social media again. Yeah. And you know what? I've like, he, he's popping up all over the place on Morph Market again. Like I'm yeah. seeing like, he has some, uh, I think they were like the double vision, the hypo DG combos on Morph Market, dude, they're sick. So, yeah. um, you know, I've always known he's had a lot of stuff, but I feel like he's been holding everything back. And I feel like now we're finally starting to see like what he's been doing. Cause he's like releasing like some like high end stuff. You know, well, I mean, other, you know, Matt, again, thank you so much for sponsoring the episode. But man, Joe, I got to say, I'm so excited to be connected where you are building your 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 goddamn legacy. Um, You know, going back to when I very first got into this, you were somebody consistently on YouTube. You had your own fucking thing going back when it was like, you know, popular. And what I mean by that, like pe pe YouTube was popular, but not everyone who was in the ball python game felt like they had to do YouTube. Like right, you, you were a part right. of that era. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But so what I'm saying is, man, you built quite a bit of a fucking motivating customer base 
not not only with the animals you sold, but just I guess custom customer like su subscribers. Right, right. I mean, like like I'm one of them. I mean, shout out to Matthew Summers. Matthew Summers. Yeah, um, dude. Behind the scenes, right here, Matthew Summers. Uh, but Matthew Summers is one of his very first investment project snakes that he got was from you. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's breeding. Yeah. It's breeding. Now, it's crazy how know? that works. Yeah. Yeah, um, dude. It's wild. But you know, I want to know how things are with you right now. I mean, for somebody who's been in the game, um, as, as experienced as you are, and what I mean by that, I mean, shit, two, three years ago, you're hatching out your first pied gravels and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you've been around Joel, you know what I mean? And I just want to know yeah, it's, where, how things are with you right now. What, what's, what's new. Let's kind right. of catch people up real quick. Right. It's, it's weird to think that I've, I, cause I don't, I don't consider myself like, I, I wouldn't consider myself an OG to this, but it's weird. Like it's, it's been almost seven years now. So it's kind of actually, I've been doing it a, a long enough to know how dumb I've done it previously, you know, like, right. so, and that's, <laughs> The biggest learning curve, I feel like the to point at am now compared to, you know, a few years ago is just uh, it's crazy how much um, how much can go wrong and you still have to kind of kind of push through it. You know, you can lose pretty critical clutches. You can lose pretty critical, you know, things like that. And like kind of the way we're we're building our building our game over here is trying to be, uh, you know, shooting for snakes that nobody's ever seen, you know, stuff like that. So, right. Uh, the projects go quick like that. And when you miss on a year, dude, it sets you back pretty far. So that's been a little bit of a learning curve. And then moving reptiles, you know, we're up here up north now. So we moved the whole collection. You know, it was like pretty stressful, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you always hear you hear stories of people moving snakes. Yeah. And you hear like seasons not even happening because of it. Right. You even hear some stories of females don't even produce again. Like, like, right. like I, I don't right. want to say ball pythons, but I've heard chondros. It would make sense. They, they just shut down. Very like, sensitive. Yeah. yeah. There's more, there's more to it than, what you know, think. humidity and heat, right. you know, right. like there's more to it, obviously, you know, elevation plays a big role. Um, so I think, you know, we were super low in elevation. We've came really high, uh, might be a little different, but we also have like a little bit more of humidity in the air, you know, so it rains a little more here. So it's like, you know, kind of playing with that. So we'll see, but this last year we were, we were, we didn't have a ton of clutches, you know. We hover about like six, seven clutches a year. Right. Um, but you've never been a ton of a clutch guy. I haven't. Yeah. Right. Our our first season, we did three. You know. Right. Um. You know. So, never wanted to do a lot of clutches. Just wanted to do the stuff I really liked. <laughs> you know. And, you know, coming from somebody who's been inspired by people who do a lot of clutches, like you, you come from a, an era where Ozzy Boyd and right. like Justin Gabelka, like yeah. the ones who put you on, right? Like yeah. It's it was you know as much as you appreciated that, I felt like you're very just breeding what you want to breed like you're, yeah 100%. joel's doing joel you know yeah. like i feel like um it's not as much now but people always thought like well shit, how can i get to 100 clutches and like right, how do i right. get to that number and i'm like dude it's the quality like why do you yeah. so worry about the number port like you yeah know? especially now it's that nuts, i'm like how are you gonna sell this shit? <laughs> it's nuts to me right so like i hear a lot of people like saying you know their first season they they're expecting like 35 clutches stuff like that yikes and i'm just like frick man that's yeah. crazy i've never done that in my life yeah. you know i couldn't imagine the stress to sell right the stress to sell i never wanted to produce more than i knew i could sell yeah and so that was the other part of it is fairly confident with the amount of animals we produce i can sell those right you know so that that helps but when doing that you know that just pushes you towards like the high end you know so uh that's kind of the direction we went and um you know every year i feel like we hatch out something cool so uh, i've been been happy with it man that's that's stuff that keeps me motivated um i kind of want to jump right into this because i can't help by the way, be ready for an amazing vlog about to drop with, with me and Joel. Um, and then also go make, go subscribe to Matthew Summers' YouTube uh, uh, YouTube channel because he drops a vlog as well. But I couldn't help when we were vlogging at your place earlier how you mentioned that your foundation, 90% of your recessive foundation consists of pie. Yeah, a lot of it. Is man. that is that Am I correct? It, it, I don't know if it's as high as 90, but it is. it's probably some way involved in almost everything. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, besides uh, my puzzle project, it's probably the only thing it's not involved in. But that was the foundation, like hundred percent. We you. started with when I very first got into when you know I originally got into this like way back in the day. Like right, I had right, right. I had an albino and I had albino and I bred those. You right. know, like in two thousand nine or something right. like that. Which is still sick back then. Like that's yeah, like, it was. Yeah. I was pumped on it, right. but um, you know, then I got out of it and then segue to like when we first got back in. You know, we started with uh, a gravel or yellow belly pied yeah. and a pastel highway poshet pied 
and he proved out to be gravel, as you know, and yeah, yeah. the pastel highway proved out to be head pied. So, you know, there was like the groundwork of all our snakes, you know, we catch a lot of those pieds and then we just were all of a sudden we we're just doing a lot of pied stuff. So I have some sort of type of feeling. A lot of people are going to laugh in the chats, but it's not as aggressive as I make it seem, <laughs> but like, you know, yellow belly, right? Like, God damn, man. Like ever since I could remember ever since highway, right? Cause right. When I started making highways and whatever wasn't highway, I felt like gravel, but people are like, sorry, man, that could be a yellow belly too. So that right. always pissed me off because right. I knew about gravel before yellow belly when I was, doing my research yeah, when you're right? Coming, right and then i saw super gravels and i was like oh my fucking god right <laughs> yeah dude then, then i saw cool. yellow belly and i saw what yellow belly does other yellow belly you make an right. ivory right which ivory it's like it's it's still a step right i like it i like ivories yeah yeah man. right and yeah. i like yellow belly but yeah if i could choose to work with something that's easier to id yes it always it, it, it always favored me like i was right. like i'd rather just if okay if this is what a gravel supposedly looks like and this is what a yellow belly supposedly looks like what does a super look like well right. i'd rather go the fucking super route absolutely right yeah and the the arguably the super gravel is way way cooler than this ivory <laughs> you know right you know arguably just right. because really we just, there's just a lot of white snakes now so right. we know how to make white snakes we like pattern now so the super gravel is cooler right now but, but with that being said like yellow belly is by far still relevant Oh, it's my, not, it's not, one of my favorite. I'm genes. not here saying like, if you have yellow belly, you're fucking stupid. No, right. I have yellow belly. I just, I mentioned that the nicest clowns I've ever produced this year had yellow belly in it. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, I see, I could see that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But what I'm saying is as we get deeper, right? Like yeah. think about, I'm just hearing Justin complain himself that right. sometimes yellow belly is hard to ID. 100%. So right. if I'm hearing it from the fucking man himself, yeah. then I'm just going to paint note because I, if it's hard for him, I don't want it hard for me. Like, yeah. dude, fuck that. You know what it's I mean? Like insurmountably hard for it's, me. It really compared hard. Compared to how hard it is. And yeah. you want to know one thing I can't stand, Joel? I fucking hate this. When I have to ask a bunch of different big dogs to help me with an ID, because right. guess what? They all say something different. Yeah. And what I right. fucking feel like sometimes, <laughs> yeah. some of them are in a bad mood. Yeah. I feel like, you know what? I see gravel, but I'm not going to say it. I do. So I'm like, bro, am I yeah. asking somebody in a good mood right now? Am I yeah. asking somebody like, so it's, I don't know. I, it's crazy, man. I, I've, I've, <laughs> I've felt that same thing a couple of times because, dude, what you're paying for really, like, you know, let's just <laughs> – say like what it is like dude justin's snakes are a little more expensive than everybody else's right but you're you get you're what you pay for it. you're getting it yeah because that dude can id a snake that's really what justin you're paying will for sell now. you a clown yellow belly right and then you'd be like you know what it's the double recessive route and then all of a sudden you pair it to a pie and then it proves out that's it that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's what justin will do that's, like, that's what i mean saying. it's not that's guaranteed what but like that yeah realized, that's, what you're, stories that's what you're getting stories of people proving out shit that like you're getting you're getting more with right. it right. you know so you know, good for him. <laughs> great, great marketing strategy. Just be better than everybody. <laughs> you want to talk about another great marketing strategy on fucking Canova, man? He just had over a hundred people. All, oh no, actually, not, well, I would say I'm sure they had guests. About a hundred people show up to his Canova uh, VIP Patreon thing. Yeah, saw that. How could you miss it? How many snakes do you think he sold to that fucking thing, bro? I bet. You know what? You I know, bet I, more than one. I, I can tell how many stories I counted. Like the next day, like yeah. how many shipments came? I'm looking at one guy over here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Drop that drop, one. Drop yeah. a cool little bag yeah. on a sick ass GHI clown. Post <laughs> hypo, or is it spot nose? Spot nose GHI clown. Anti GHI spot nose. Post clown. Post head hypo. 66. It's fucking head, bro. Let's yeah, knock yeah, it yeah. off. It's from yeah. Justin. Those it's are hundreds. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, but, it's uh, yeah, he's killing it. You know, he's killing it. He's good. He's inspiring all of us to kill it. That's what I like about. But him. you know, you understand, Justin's not the only one killing it, man. And and and, and oh yeah. And, but sure. the thing is, one thing Justin does that, and, and nothing against anyone else, but the innovation behind what Justin does, like yeah. he's on the forefront. Like he does consistent YouTube videos. He does fucking goddamn patreon like he does everything he possibly can to put himself out there yeah and there's people out there who make fucking pff, they're making a killing but they they're not on that side of the the realm yeah dude so right, i respect those right. people too but justin is the one putting the link work in yeah dude this is like he's been he's been posting those like um kind of like recessive re recession tips and oh stuff. my god dude, we could here, talk about that here's, bro here's the tip dude just do just, more just, or just, or, yeah. just do it like what is he doing he's showing you no. You post every single day. You take great pictures. You take great pride in your animals. You keep posting every single day, innovating, explaining things, com com like giving back to the community. Like, what are you contributing to the community? Right. He contributes astoundingly to the community. Constantly. Constantly. And that's why he's he killing it. He has constant it. support. Right. 
That's what it is, dude. It's People contribution. Want to support, man. support. <laughs> right, right, dude. We're all we're all in it. We're all right. supporting each other. Right. You know, the money really never leaves. We just share it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, you know, Justin's in the Netherlands right now. Like he's right. in a different fucking country. Right, you know what I right. mean? And, and, and pushing what he pushes. Right. On top of being a family guy and everything else. Like I said, there's so many different levels to this, and I have so much respect to mm -hmm. the other big dogs in the game. But who's doing it like him? Yeah, nobody. Right. And right. that's nothing to take away from anybody. But I'm just saying, like Justin, he's, he's Justin, all in. In, Justin, Justin influences non-ball Python people. Right. I brought Gary Shavino, Bill Stegall, Marshall Mendez, um, right. all, all over Justin's house. Right. These are non. I don't want to say they're non-ball Python people. Marshall has a, but like fair enough. But right. you're not. You're gonna get Marshall's non-attention by talking about ball pythons all the time. Right. You'll eventually just walk away. I've right. Seen, I've right. seen it. Yeah. Um, it's bored. Right. right. But they were so blown away at Justin's facility, bro. Like, Bill's, how could you not be, right? But I'm saying that, like, he inspires everybody. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, the problem is he's all in, man. He's 100% committed. Now, let's talk know? about when he was all in. And we're not trying to make this a Justin episode. I'm sorry. Uh, fucking, <laughs> you know, any of my sponsors are over this. It's, 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 <laughs> a, it's a relevant topic. No, but to the uh, industry. you want to talk about when Justin went to a family member for a loan, when who yeah. God knows where this one went. Like, right, like right. how the fuck? Like, okay, who would ask for a $70,000 loan right now coming into this with Justin's recession videos? Nobody would probably want to do it. Right. I mean, maybe, maybe a couple of people know, but how about Justin at 19 years old asking his uncle for a $70,000 yeah, loan dude. to breed snakes when it was still like a long hair fucking yeah. biker hobby thing? You yeah, dude. I mean? Like, yeah, bro, man. It's breeding snakes. What? Breeding snakes is still weird. Yeah, I mean, kind <laughs> you of. Know? Yeah. It's, it's, not, yeah. it's not incredibly normalized. It's very normal for all of us. I told you, my whole family <laughs> looked the other way until I showed them the money. And yeah. They're like, oh, hey. What? So what kind of snake is that? <laughs> oh, that was well, pretty. All, all of a sudden, God yeah. damn it, when I started showing up with gifts and stuff like that, it's all everything changes, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. It just, uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, it, it, you got to appreciate the ones who are like, I mean, some people call it dangling the carrot. Yeah, yeah. Because how about let's talk about one thing that a lot of people I, I I have on the show and talk to you about. They say or believe breeding ball pythons or getting into ball pythons is a is a pyramid scheme. Right. Like yeah. Kind of fucking like you're setting you're setting the next dickhead up to believe that they're going to be the next Justin Cabelka or you know Levant or Miguel or Ozzy and it just or Mark Bailey and it just doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well. I would say that's, you know, everybody has to like figure out what their own version of success is. Yeah. Well, first of well, all, what, yeah, what, what's, what is, you know what I mean? Happy. Right. Yeah. And, and to be quite honest, most of the people that are being sold on the idea of being the next Ozzy or something like that wouldn't want to do what they have to do to be them. Right. Well, you know what I mean? What they've gone through. gone through what they've gone through. Like Justin is not, not busy. <laughs> you know, like his whole day is occupied. And do you really want to do that? Because that's the stuff it takes. That's why he posts 37 times a day and everything is perfect quality. No, that's because it's summer. Well, not the summer. <laughs> but, you know, who so found delegates it? it right? Who yeah, found yeah, yeah, right. her? Right. Who delegated that. Right. right. Not trying to take that away from you. No, guys. absolutely. It's art. You yeah, know, yeah. it's incredible. You know, but that's, you know, it's part of it. All you right. know, so right. it is obviously, dude. It'd be ignorant to say that there aren't some similarities between a pyramid scheme and what we're doing. Right. Obviously. But it all depends on the personality. Yes. Right. Dude. And at the baseline, dude, it's it's also not a pyramid scheme where you're like, you know, you're working with animals. This is awesome. Right. You know, and these animals have different value based on their availability, just like everything else humans do. Or like us, what value brings to our life? Like, I mean, right. what, what, what value snakes bring to our life? Right. Right. Like, so it's like. I don't know. Like, I guess some snakes are more expensive than others, but you know, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you know, What's like the big deal. <laughs> yeah, some are super expensive. Some aren't. You know, buy what you want. Buy what you can afford. Stay and, right. and and play. Yeah, because you can get there. That's that's the other thing, dude. This is a this is a time game. Time, this time is on your side. Like, this dude, is a crunch, man. Dude, you know, man. I'm glad you said that, man. Because if it's one thing, like God, I appreciate anyone. Who comes into this game excited wanting to grow right but when i have someone begging me for their first clutch first off i can't give you your first clutch i'm not the snake okay <laughs> right. but when there's right. somebody like dude like this is the ovulation man like this is it and i'm yeah. like i understand that anticipation yeah, yeah 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 but this is you're going to be your this is your your first year right you should be happy if you get a first clutch and if you don't absolutely who gives a fuck? like right those, all that shit it comes. will happen it's gonna happen it will happen right, right. absolutely yeah and it's dude this is this is uh 
when I first got in, I was really worried about sprinting. And I have quickly realized that, dude, to even make your mark, I feel like you need five years minimum. And that's if you were spending like a decent amount of money with the right people and blah, blah, blah. You know, because the first breeding year, you're really just seeing the other person's vision. And then if you get lucky with odds, you produce some of the snakes maybe you wanted to see. And then that fourth or fifth year, you're finally like really breeding what you hatched, right. you know? So now it's like, now that like seventh, eighth, 10th year, you're, you're breeding stuff that no one has by default, because you're the only one that's been working this direction, you know? So right. you can't even really go buy your own snakes anymore. You have to hatch them. And that's like always been my goal. Like who, who stands out when it comes to like coming in at such a short time, but building so much, who stands out to you when you think of that? Well, I mean, it has to be Miguel, right? I, I, I mean, obviously I think Miguel's probably the biggest one in my mind that I didn't even know at that time, like what he was building was so like futuristic. Yeah. He did. he's getting off from Justin, dude. Yeah. And the other thing too, Miguel has the same work ethic right, he don't as, stop. as yeah. Justin does. And yeah. that's, that's what it takes, man. It just, you know, you have to be hundred percent committed. Yeah. Usually when you're hundred percent committed into something, actually 100% committed into something, you do very well at it. That fool Miguel is going to be the Justin of Mexico. <laughs> yes, he is, dude. Seriously. Yes, he is. It's crazy to me. Yeah, yeah that's wild. That's cool, though. Good, it's good. Because like, I mean, the more fun. he does over there, the more snakes will sell in Mexico. I mean, it all spreads. That's what I'm saying. You know what yeah. I mean? And imagine a market that doesn't have a market. Well, once it has a market, then what? Right. That, that helps us. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't. This this is not in any way negative. You no, know? No, fuck no. And then we piggyback off that. So right. what kind of pyramid scheme does that where you like actually make money off not doing anything? I think it's a pyramid scheme for the ones <laughs> you know? who aren't have that mentality. Like, right. Like there's just so many different things people need to consider when even wanting to approach this lifestyle. Yeah. Like, are you in a rush? Are you in a rush? Right, like, yeah. do you need something to happen? And if you do, then maybe go to crypto or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, like don't Dude. come here, even though crypto is a bad idea too. There I'm are significant better investments, obviously, yeah. you yeah. know, depending on your time frame. Right. But I can't think of a more fun one that gives me more joy than what, you know, cleaning snake poop does, I guess, right. you know, well, like, because guess what? Snake poop came from a snake that ate. A snake ate. that ate makes me happy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it shed recently. Hey, you your know? snakes shed, they eat, they screw, they're happy. Yes. So you're dude. doing your job. Yes, dude. It's so validating. Right. So, you know, like it's, well, let's talk about when you finally hold back and you just, you enjoy what you have, you raise it up, bro. It goes quick. Like it does time, when you stop caring, it flies by. That's what I mean. Like, I can't believe this is seventh year. So it's almost a double edged sad sword. It's like, yeah. Okay. You're miserable when you want to rush it, like, cause you're, but then when, yeah. you, when you take your time and you don't care, it's just sad that it's like, wow, like, right, dude. where'd the time go? Like, right. You know what, what just mean? happened? Right. What just happened? Yeah. It's uh, man, it's, it's dude. And everything's crazy about this industry too. It's like, dude, when would we have met outside of snakes? Never. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, that's what's cool about this oh, you is like me? yeah. meeting people. It's so much fun. And you were a part of the first people group of people that I met that I grew, I actually grew a relationship. On. Yeah. It all yeah. came from Miguel, right? Miguel right. Brought all of us together. Right. right. Yeah. That's why I love Miguel so much. Yeah, dude. He, he was, was like the a, keystone. He was a team captain. Bro. Yeah. Everyone yeah. wanted to be around Miguel. Yeah. And no matter who you were, if you're around Miguel, you're having a good time. It was fantastic. We were all bro. fucking brothers, bro. Like right. we became tight right off yeah. the bat. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. That was like the first couple of Pomonas that mm -hmm. I went to. That was a really good time, man. Pomonas yeah. were were a lot of fun. Shout out to Nick, the homie yeah. renowned reptiles, another, <laughs> renowned another reptiles. legendary guy. <laughs> yeah, part of the group. Yeah, he's been an OG. Shout out to while. Adam. Adam. Shout out Beach to Bum. Beach Bum. Wish you were here. Adam, dude, I try to work to get Adam here, but the guy, he's in the dog business now. The yeah, guy's dude, in the he's dog, doing game. dog stuff, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Grimy. I'm just kidding. No, he's setting up for the the line breeding and stuff for snakes. It's coming, you know. He's oh, already, shit. yeah. He's he's getting used to it with like uh, dog breeding. I also want to say shout out Harry Wang. <laughs> oh, dude, I haven't seen Harrison in so long. I miss he's him. He's killing man. it as a dad, man. He he's, is he's doing great things. Yeah, and I just talked to Harry on the phone not too long ago, and I haven't talked to Harry like that in over a year, man. And time, right. it's just because we get caught up in things. Like, dude, Joel, actually, you and I before this podcast was planned, shit, you and I didn't almost talk for like about a year. It was probably pretty close, dude. Yeah. yeah it, since the last uh show i went to arlington yeah 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 dude got covid there lame yeah. i want to um lame. <laughs> since we kind of talked about the recession talk you know i mean i want to yeah. hear it from you since you've seen many different waves in the industry lately right um 
for anyone out there weren't wondering why they can't sell their snakes is it a bad thing that they can't sell their snakes there's too many snakes on morph market we're saturated right i feel like we're back to the 2017 talk like remember when oh, yeah. python market was saturated and everyone was hating on it Dude. i feel like we're almost there but in a way we're, yeah. we're here now because of covid because covid spiked us up and, yeah. and then it fucking like you know what i mean this this market we're in right now feels normal to me this is like what it was and right. like you know you had to work a little bit to sell your snakes right and if you weren't working a little bit you weren't selling your snakes right. and that's kind of i feel like kind of what it is and i know that sounds uh probably way more simple i'm simplifying it obviously a little bit obviously snakes may not be selling what they used to sell during covid but I mean, are you doing obvious. are you doing all the marketing you can right are you youtubing videos right are you fucking putting reels what all that shit? are you doing right. and that's been like dude uh my snakes you know we still have a few holdbacks that haven't haven't sold and a year ago dude those have been gone instantly and to be honest dude we dude i haven't really committed to posting consistently or in my opinion contributing like i've been talking about contributing really to the market um for a while so you know it's on me in my opinion like right. i know i could improve um you know stuff like that you know i see it used to be, you know, like two years ago, you could just uh, take your phone out and snap a picture of your snake and put it on there for six thousand dollars, and someone was going to buy it. Take it, yeah, yeah dude. From fucking but Carl and I, I see these like pictures on Morph Market for these like, dude, snakes that are exceptionally expensive and they're fuzzy and blurry and yeah. not focused, and I'm just like, man, there's a sock in the background, dude. Right, like, <laughs> how, why do you think maybe your snake's not selling, dude? You know, right. like stuff like that. Like, I don't know, you know. Um, I just think, you know, before I like to be in the habit of before I start blaming other stuff, I try to check what I'm really doing. I mean, because at the end of the day, it's like, don't, you know, figure out what you, even if the market is bad, well, it is right. figure it out. Well, right. There's got to be a way. Do something different. Like, right. Figure it out. Right. Right. Don't, don't maybe uh, pair to pair. Yeah. You know, pair for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Pair, pair your animals for the animals you want. Don't, don't do the 25 pairings for the snakes you sell. Right. you know like the wholesale snakes don't don't do that yeah you know i don't know change change your breeding style change uh find a wholesaler you know get dude kingsnake.com that still exists yeah so does and, craigslist yeah as, as crazy and as shitty as it sounds there's they, those that still come up on craigslist you can still post things other than morph market and yeah. certain people go to certain websites and they don't go to others so yeah. post in different areas there i mean there's there's wanted ads for whole like wholesale ball pythons on kingsnake.com right. on the classifieds. Hit one of those wholesalers up. Sell your snakes. You were also one of the first homies of mine that I respected the 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 organic Instagram following that you had. Yeah. Because um, I'm not gonna lie, man. The the following was a part of my like my mental mind fuck in the first year or two, just because I I was like, how am I ever gonna get to a thousand followers? I think I had 150 right. followers, and I was just like, you know, I was friends with Miguel and people like you, Khalil, who had like 13,000 at yeah, the time, or 25 million, yeah, 25 million, yeah. And, and I was just <laughs> yeah. like, dude, I, why? I'm like, I'm not as cool as these guys. That's for sure. But yeah, <laughs> for reals. Um, but. I, I eventually, like, I remember I got to a thousand. I was so happy with a thousand. I was right. like, I'm just, I'm just gonna post, like, Dude, just post, right? Just post, right? And, and, and what I'm saying is, like, I, I, I talk a lot about, about this a lot, but I want to hear it from you um, as far as anyone who's coming into the Instagram world for the first time. How do you kind of build a foundation? Like, how do you do yeah. so? Even if you have limited animals, how do you start something where it leads to something? Right. And why, right. why we talk about this? Can I take a piss? Like, Absolutely. I, I think piss. it's. I think this, it's this, this lick was going right through me, man. I can't even hold it. Gold key. Gold key. It's in there. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. So Long organic uh, Instagram. Yeah. Organic Instagram following. So I guess I could just go over everything I actually did for Instagram. Um, when I first started out, uh, we were just posting consistently. Obviously, that's a huge part. Decent pictures. Decent like lighting goes a long way, obviously. Uh, I watched a ton of videos on how to take a picture. Not saying I have good pictures, but um a decent picture just take a decent picture um and then the other thing we ended up doing was a few times we did the pay for every once in a while you see those like um advertisements obviously instagram half of instagram is just an advertisement now um so we did a couple of those in initially which was decent you know five years ago when we started the instagram but i feel like that's maybe some muddy water it's not maybe as effective as it used to be um and then other than that, it was just uh, making myself post constantly. 
Um, posting all the time changes your algorithm. It changes where, <laughs> whereas like right now, you know, we post pretty sparingly. Um, you can like go through my Instagram and I'll have like, I don't know, I'll get like 300 likes, uh, recently. And then down, like maybe four or five months ago, I would have 1400, you know? So it's like, I stopped posting, you stop getting follows, you stop getting interactions. It's just kind of the way it goes. Cause it's a, it's like an average, you know, if you post 10 times in a day and each, each post gets 10 likes, well, it was actually a hundred likes you got that day. Right. And then that like kicks you to the next algorithm, like loop, you know? So I don't know, social media, it's like, it's like the only thing that kind of annoys me about ball pythons a little bit. The, the social media grind gets tough, right? That's, 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 that's a tough one. And that's why I admire how much you do. Dude. <laughs> it's dude. Well, if I had if committed I, earlier, yeah. like how Justin's you're committed, oh, it's the same so. thing. It's the same thing. That's, that's kind of, you know, dude, it's the same stuff. It's, it's, that's how committed you got to be. And, you know, it shows, dude, this is, this is a cool setup. Appreciate it, man. Speaking of commitment, I want to say shout out to all my Patreon members who are committed to me, yeah, committed me go. to keep this going. Cause like I said, I go so goddamn hard because people who support me, man. And, right. uh, like, you know, I, I, I give so much credit to the people who put out content that still work 12, 13, 14 hour jobs. Um, dude. because I remember I started, I was able to start the podcast pretty aggressively the way i did because covid happened and right, actually right. wait yeah covid happened no 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 you hold were on just before that my knee hurt no yeah what happened yeah. was i started but then i got i got my my knee got hurt yeah slipknot concert uh, remember so mm -hmm. i had i got off of work for like i was off work for like fucking four months right, and that's right. when i was like dude force we should do another podcast and force is like well we're not doing ball python people and that's when i came out with trap talk yeah and i was like okay yeah, fine yeah. you don't want to do ball python people i'll do fucking this, yeah. my own podcast called trap talk and then i was doing two shows a week um but dude that's i mean i was home all the time it's like i had a fucking you know right. like retirement fucking life it was it yeah was different awesome. different days but i i knew i know i noticed i just didn't want to be home and be a piece of shit i was like dude i'm home i gotta i gotta take advantage of what why like give me a reason dude. why i should stay home right right and um man it, it like you know because the animals picked up really aggressively during that time too and um, for sure 2020 is my first full season where i had seven clutches um they all sold bro pff, god damn like and i posted on instagram gone gone and he yeah just, matthew summer's one of my best customers that year god yeah. damn he killed, it. he killed it that year um, <laughs> but yeah like you know it was like one of those things where i was so i didn't expect to sell that good and and not even putting it together that covid but i was like i made so much money off these seven clutches <sighs> yeah i don't need a lot i don't need a lot and like yeah. bro, i didn't sell anything crazy like i sold like you know, five, like maybe the most expensive thing was like 1800 or 2k, right. but it wasn't anything crazy. And I made a lot. Yeah, dude. And I was like, why is people, why do people want a 100, 200, 300 clutches? Like, yeah. why, why would the fuck you want that much yeah, work? Dude. Yeah. Because it it's, takes away from the fun of everything. It's insane, man. Yeah. I have, I, I mean, you saw, I have three racks and the one rack isn't even a full rack, you right. know, like it's, and that takes enough time. You know, and then hatchling season, your workload triples, <laughs> you know, because all of a sudden now you have like 90 babies, even with like six, seven clutches, you know, like you can hit, you can hit good and have a lot of snakes all of a sudden, you know, so um, it's tough to, but at the same time, you know, more clutches, more money, right? So that's more, more money, more problems. And more, yes, sir. <laughs> dude, you are going to increase your problems and you increase your community. Now, if you want to talk about. You know, I had my this is my biggest year this year. I think I had uh 14 clutches, right? So 14 clutches, and I still have four more in the incubator. So 18 clutches. I have over 50 something hatchings I haven't even taken pictures of. I haven't <laughs> yeah, I, haven't I heard you saying them. that the other day. And it's like yeah, and, and like I'm okay because I yeah. mean I only got four more clutches and I should be good for a few months, right? Right. But still, like that kind of worries me that there's that much who they've had they've all had over five meals. Like, yeah, everybody's they, eight. They should be fucking like because if this was 2020. I'd be like this. Oh yeah, you'd be but snapping. But now, like you know, I got like it's kind of like man, you made these six snakes. Well, hello, idiot. Who's gonna sell them? Like you right. have to go sell them. You, you do. I mean? Yeah, that's see, there it is. Right, it's a whole other workload. Right, it is, dude. And you got like fifty of them. You got to take pictures. Yeah. Of. How about the yeah. fuckers that don't want to cooperate? How about yeah. the ones that don't want to show anything? They're just yeah, like dude. squeezing their. It's yeah. like okay, it ain't gonna work. Yeah, with dude. This guy it today. takes three hours to take pictures of ten snakes because they're so balled up. You know. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's all that stuff, and uh, that's the stuff that. Uh, 
you know, people that continue to thrive, never slack on. And that's kind of what it is, yeah. you know, like you just, uh, you know, you keep on posting cool stuff. You keep on making what you want to make. And if you're in the situation where you can't sell your snakes, well, at least you have snakes you wanted. <laughs> like how many, yeah. uh, well, dude, here's a good point. Um, cause one thing me and Joel share, uh, we have a, we have a pretty awesome motocross background. Um, dabbled know, and, and Joel, Joel actually took it to the fucking, he took it to the level where he was at Lake Elsinore training, like be, trying to be at that next level. See what happened with me. I got to, I was 16 years, 16 years old racing 125 novice. Um, and I was like actually getting my feet wet on 125 and yeah. my mom and dad got a divorce. Right. So all the money went away. Yeah. So as you know, motocross is one of the most expensive sports. Like <laughs> shit is expensive. Especially it is. <laughs> it is the, it's the cheapest, I think, motor sport. And when you're comparing really? out of motors, yeah, I didn't when you're comparing that. motors though, like your yeah, boats, and boats else, cars, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like dude, yeah, it's, it's probably the cheapest motorsport. And that says a lot because motorsport is super expensive. So yeah, I mean, it's dude, it's a lot of travel, you know, dude, yeah. I have driven so much. Yeah. I have burned so much fuel. It's crazy. You know? So like that alone, especially right now, yeah. you know, like, yeah, dude, it's, it's an expensive one for sure. You know, very fortunate to been able to do it, but, um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, man. I got beat up a lot, but uh, good times. Yeah, now we have to pay for it. But yeah, the age. Yeah, yeah. As it turns out, um, I passed. I was gonna go somewhere with this. What the fuck were we talking about right before this? I was gonna take this somewhere. What were we just talking about right now? We were talking about. I do. We one. share recession something in common. Slow. You said recession slow. We sh we share something, and then you said dirt bikes. So I just went one twenty five novice. No, but there, I was going to bridge this to something. Okay, let's just. Keep it was moving. probably fantastic. It what really you were going to do. I usually get it back. I get it back. Hold yeah. On, give me a minute. I no. don't. I don't have any doubt for this. <laughs> like this is this is exactly where I want to be right now. <laughs> okay. Um, similarities. Motocross. Motocross. Joel beat up. Beat up. You quit. Divorce. The divorce made you stop. That was the last thing we talked about. I got a divorce with who? No, your mom and dad. Your mom and dad's divorce. Oh, the money stopped. The money stopped. Yes. Money stopped. Okay. Dude, told you. All right. Caught it. So back to what I was saying. Actually, I, I lost it. No. No, you got to yeah, be fuck, no, You got to be kidding me. No, right it now. was something before the moment, before the divorce. Before the money stopped. <laughs> you just made such a big deal about the money stopping, though. I don't think we should just sit here and just fucking sit on this. For, I, I think it will come back. Cheers. Cheers to you guys. Hey, cheers to you, buddy. Hey, cheers. cheers to Matthew hey, hey to you thank you. Hopefully I get it back. And if I don't, who cares? Um, let's get back to what we were talking about, which we don't know. Yeah. Um, so snakes and stuff. Snakes and shit. I have a tricolor. That's cool. Tricolor what? Tricolor hognose. Oh, my God. <laughs> we're not talking about hognose. By the way, that is my favorite tricolor, though. I mean, I, I, Of the tricolors? That's my favorite hognose. <laughs> yeah, I know. Tricolor. I, I know. We posted it and I liked it. Yeah, I know. Um, I know. Okay, let's talk about this. I, I, I want to talk about how you're adapting with you. We're talking about adulting and stuff like that. Yeah, um, right. So you obviously took in a whole like not 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 see back with the YouTube world, but you, you kicked back with YouTube, correct? Like For sure, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, now, let me ask you this, man, because we were talking earlier about how certain social media platforms almost punishes you if you don't abide by what they want. Yeah. And, and it's yeah, yeah. true. I could tell you that right now. Yeah. Shout out to Gary Shavino. Gary Shavino is one of my very, like probably one of the most watched YouTube reptile YouTube videos out there that I, that I, that I, that I fucking just study and I watch. Right. And he came out like blazing guns, bro. Like he, he came out with, I think his first video was like seven K views and, like, I think he has Jeez, another one's 20K. Right. Like, he just and organically doesn't right. pay for shit, right? Right, right. But then over the last year or so, like, he kind of took, like, a kind of a drastic hit. Like, now it's, like, 1,800. Yeah. You know, but he only posts, like, once once every other week. Yep. Or I think, no, once a month. Yep, dude, that's what it is. And that's what you, YouTube this is. They're like, yeah. okay, you don't want to give us any. We're not going to give you any. That's, right, that's kind of right. how that works, don't you think? 100%. It's kind of how a little bit of how all the platforms work, I feel like. Like, if you're not giving them content, they're not going to send the content. Yeah. You know, um, you know, it's tough. The problem, like, with YouTube right now, to me, is it's, a, it's an awful lot of work. As we can, you know, like, nobody else can see, like, there is so much stuff set up in here. It's a ton of work to do a great job at filming a YouTube video. And a reel, I use my phone. And I put it on Instagram. And... You know, it gets more views than my YouTube video does. 
Mm-hmm. And I put 10 times the work in the YouTube video. Yeah. You know, so oh, it's great. Dude, the, the YouTube work is, especially when you don't know editing. At first. Yeah. Like, right. At first, terrible. like the amount of work that went in to get to a point where it only takes me 30 minutes to edit a video was years of trying to figure out how to remember all the hotkeys so that I can speed this process up and, you know, stuff like that. So that's a problem I kind of have with YouTube right now is uh, the older I are, the older I think you get, the less time you have in multiple aspects, but in your day, the less time you have too. And so shooting YouTube videos is just tough. It's just tough. And the payout, as it turns out, Instagram pays more right. for your reels. I got it. I got it. I get, remember what I was going to say. Oh, there it is. See? Here, yeah, cheers. Yes, cheers. I got it. Cheers, buddy. Okay, okay. Yes. All right. All right. Deja vu time. So one thing I love so there about we me and Joel <laughs> is that, you know, we come from a, a legit motocross background. And what I was going by that is shit. I remember just idolizing motocross, like Jeremy McGrath, Ricky Carmichael. Yeah, like, dude, dude I, I, I wanted to yeah. be them so bad. Yeah, like, I remember like I, I did all I wanted to do is watch them. Right. But how much work did I know that they were putting in? How, as a kid, I don't think I understood that. Like, oh yeah, I just thought, wow, they must be lucky. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you like, like you know what's crazy about yeah. you? You're training at Lake Elsinore with all these fucking goddamn up and coming legendary motocross riders. Yeah, Who man. knows where they're at right now, right? Oh yeah, dude. I mean, like Dean Wilson. We went. Dean I went off the gate with Dean, Dean Wilson. Dean Wilson, bro. Like what I was racing savage. Dean Wilson. One that dude's favorite, like a dude. freak. You know, dude. like. There's, there's like one of my favorite 250 riders of all time. Bro, oh, Dean Wilson. He, yeah. He just shredded on 250. Wild, bro. wild. Yeah. You know, he so the game too. it's, yeah. The the amount of work that goes into something, if you want to do it right, is astronomical. So what I'm saying is like, you know, that's well, why I know I'm not doing enough football pythons. Well, check this out. Well, let's talk about Barcheck. Right. So Barcheck was like my 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 first snake hero. Still is my hero. I love Barcheck. I'm a big Barcheck fan. I fucking love Brian Barcheck. That's my boy. Yeah. He's got some, some something to say. Let me know. That's my boy. I love <laughs> Barcheck. Man, but big fan. My I got anxiety watching Barcheck work. So when, <laughs> yeah. when I went to when I when we went to when we went to the Reptarium for the first time, I I, I saw how busy he was, and I almost kind of got selfish and upset because I'm like, dude, he's not gonna like he's too fucking busy. I was like, right. So I was kind of like, you know, I was remember tired. It was during COVID, and I was like, I just wanted to hang out with him, but he was so like involved with the people were there it was jam-packed the reptarian was jam-packed yeah. so next thing you know he makes his round he's like mj like because i thought he was so busy you wouldn't know where the fuck i was right he's like dude right, mj dude. you made it he dude. hugged me and i was like <gasps> absolutely i was like dude he fucking recognized me <laughs> yeah and i was like everything changed after that he made yeah. me feel like a person you know what yeah. i mean but then i was like dude this guy's life is intense like intense bro, dude. hey has it calmed down every year every year we go back he's like dude this is what i'm doing now this is what I'm doing now. And I'm like, Brian, this is what he does. Yeah. This is what he does. This is what he does. Yeah. It's the same thing, dude. It's he's, he's 100% in 110. He's all, and he's not afraid to be hundred percent. Right. in. People need to understand. Like, are you, do you, are you willing to do something and put 110 in it? Right. Cause that means a lot, bro. So much. Like we're dude. talking even like Miguel, like look at Miguel in so Mexico, like, like going everywhere, bro. Like, dude, yeah. Do you really want to be bro. in an airport? four times a month you know dude it's well, we tough. do once a month and it's still like god damn that's why i was like dude. oh road trip to joel's i was like fuck it i'm down to drive because i'm sick of airports yeah man i fucking hate airports dude bro. i'm not a fan of airports I'm not a fan of flying like it's like you're almost like because it's like you like you get delayed you're there for 12 hours you're like it's like you're in jail it's like <laughs> yeah, you're, you're like not in control at <laughs> all in that scenario <laughs> like, they don't give a fuck nobody cares no. Nobody cares because nobody can do anything. Yeah, like what it doesn't. Do? It screwed. doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, tough. Life life's hard. And you're not the. You're, you're one of of a hundred people screwed today. Guys. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, why yeah. you special, dickhead? Yeah. Write an yeah. email. <laughs> yeah, write an email. Somebody will get to it. Maybe. Yeah, we'll get you some credit down the line. Um, you yeah, know, but this kind of goes back to like people wanting to do 30, 40 clutches their first year. You know, I mean, like I said, God bless them. You know, some 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 pick it up, but it's like. You don't need to do that. Like, just so you know, like, first off, it's not really a flex. I don't feel like unless I don't know. Okay, let's talk about somebody. I felt like um, I'm trying to say this without sounding mean. Um, okay, JP, my my dog JP. Okay, JP, Canada. Um, yeah, JP, J- good old JP. Right. Talk about a motherfucker who didn't have it easy at first coming into this game. Um, yeah. But if you look at everything he's doing now, everything JP posts is fucking stupid. 
he posted some sick ass shit, bro. Like, yeah, I mean he has incredible animals. No, like he has incredible animals. It's incredible too. animals. Yeah, but it's also the time he let just put it. Like it's it's kind, sure. it kind of shows you what timing does for you. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Yeah. Dude. But JP did work during this whole time. Like he kept his, you know, he he kept his social media where it needed to be, and he has the followers that he has to buy the shit that he's producing. Exactly. You, you have right. to build that. Like, right, right, right. Like, that takes time. That takes a lot of time. People think that because of the money you spent with somebody guarantees you something. That doesn't mean shit. Not not anymore. No, not not anymore. That's not a good anymore. Point. Not anymore. Because it did at one point. At did. first, it's like, oh, you got that from so-and-so. Yeah, I think I think not anymore for that, for sure. I and and you know, there's still a little bit there. It, right. you know, depending on who you buy from. Um your snakes maybe carry a little more weight, I guess. Yeah. snakes that you have you know they know that that's the id or it should be um you know but yeah not anymore there's too many there's too many people doing too many cool stuff too too many people doing too much cool stuff i guess would be a better sentence but too many people trying to be cool like, too many cool people <laughs> <laughs> too yeah. many cool people too many people who've never been cool trying to be cool doing doing stuff Spending cool money with not cool people. I'm just kidding. Right, right. With lamos. <laughs> yeah. For anybody that hasn't bought a snake from State 48, they've been making mistakes in their life. So that's that's what this really boils down to, actually, <laughs> as it turns out. I mean, I, I'm curious, Joel. Like, what are some of the smartest moves you made prior to the big social media blow up that you're proud about? Either like a certain snake you invested in, somebody certain that you bought from. Like, is there anything that? Any wise moves you feel like you made in the beginning of this that you can maybe throw down for people? Um, I think it was knowing that – I think the biggest thing is knowing your actual limitations and being realistic with what you want to do. Right. Um, I didn't want to have a lot of snakes, so I didn't have a lot of snakes. And I think that helped me out quite a bit. It helped me not get burnt out as quick as I think maybe it could have been if I got overwhelmed, couldn't sell snakes, or like there was an issue or – you know, it sheltered me from a lot of things that ha starts to happen when you start increasing your numbers. Like you yeah. will have a random snake that dies. Oh, that happens. It just will happen. You'll sometimes produce your best snake that dies. Yes, you will. Yeah. And it will happen often. Yeah. yeah. It's a shame, but it's the way she goes. It's the way she goes. Yeah. In the words of uh, the great it? Lake, uh, Ricky's dad from... Uh, Ricky, Ricky Bobby? No, Ricky from Trailer Park Boys. The oh, way she goes. Is that what that's from? What's what's his what's the dad's name? Why can't I remember his name? Gosh damn it. He's just truck driver, which you know is good. Like truck drivers. Yeah. Yeah. Ricky, I've seen I've seen I've seen a couple dude, trailer parks. They're pretty iconic. I, I never got caught into it though. I want to get caught into it. Oh, you could get caught. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 you could get caught. get caught. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. It's a shame they had such a late bloom in their lives. Right. Because they could have produced some great content. But anyways, um, yeah, sometimes you know, you lose snakes, man. We lost a lot of snakes. Uh, we lost a lot of snakes in the move. It was a bummer. Yeah. It was a big bummer. We lost whole clutches last year during the move, you know, four entire clutches so jesus christ you know and a lot of them were like we're trying to prove out like posset clowns and posset pies and stuff like that and then you know now we have a whole nother year before we really know what to pair to them so you know genetic testing great great we'll, right we'll get into hol holster that one yeah got it i yeah. have something i want to call you out on yeah i was taking a piss for the second time in your bathroom over there yeah i couldn't help but to read the lid what did the lid say <laughs> well it said eight six twenty two so that means it was recent about right months ago but it says sunset pie oh yeah what was going on with that was that like was that sunset to pie or what, what, what or no was it, was, it uh, sunset pies? it was supposed to be sunset pies yeah was that the clutch that went bad no or you just didn't it, it might as well be bad yeah Whoa, we, <laughs> tell me what the fuck yeah dude i actually haven't even like i didn't you can, dude you so talked about it i have talked about it i've oh. talked about these sunset pies i haven't talked about it this year okay um tell me yeah, I guess fuck it, right? Um, so <laughs> I bought these Sunset Pie. Pos this is the biggest investment I've ever made. It, initially, this is like the like I couldn't believe we bought these snakes. We bought these double head Sunset Pies. Okay. Um, they grew fast and strong, dude. The girl was ready in like eighteen months. It was like the hero. It was a legend, dude. And this would have been two thousand maybe eighteen. Um, we got two thousand eighteen or two thousand nineteen. I think it was closer to two thousand eighteen. Got 10 eggs from the girl, right? Whole clutch, no sunsets. 
two pies. Dope. Cool. Keep it. Yeah. So next year they don't go. This year they go again. Six eggs, all normal. <laughs> Dude, like what? I don't even know if there's sunset in there at this point. Like I know they're het pies. But I think the third you need it. You need. I, I need one third. more year. So yeah. this is taking I me. That shit, bro. This oh, is going to take me five, six years to kind of officially say Confirm. I've been breeding normal het pie to normal het pie this entire time. <laughs> this entire time. Yeah. So I was super, super pumped on that. But you know, dude. So here's the here's the counter argument. First year we have ten eggs. We don't hit a single sunset, but we do hit two pies. Right. Next time they breed, we have six eggs. We get all normals. So there's your odds. Like odds can play a factor, right? right. I know they're hit pied. But we got no pied. Statistically, we should have at least got one. We got none. We also got no sunsets and 16 eggs. <laughs> so so let's, that's bridge, tough. Let's, bridge this to, let's bridge this to genetic testing then. Okay. Because right. now here we are in a different era from when you first got in, when I first got in. Absolutely. Um, Obviously, there's only certain mores that these genetic tests could prove yeah. out, right? I mean, yeah. is there an idea yet as far as when shit like sunset can happen? Or like, what's the deal? I'm curious. Yeah, it, the day there is sunset testing, and I might be ignorant, maybe there is sunset testing. The day there's sunset testing, I will be testing those animals because immediately, it's, I can't stand producing normals. Drives me crazy. Um, I tried to we didn't produce a single normal other than that clutch this year six of them six of them we produced six of them from that dang clutch you know so God it's like damn you snake God. yeah so it's like come on and how am i gonna sell <laughs> poshet maybe poshet sunsets you're not you're gonna i fuck can't <laughs> right <laughs> and so there's you know house. there's reptile shops here in arizona that could have some fire is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Connor could get a really lucky <laughs> fucking pair on his birthday. Right, dude. Yeah, some crazy stuff could be out there <laughs> right now. So, or there could be just some posset pies floating around. I don't know. You know, the verdict's out. Yeah. But yeah, that's a dude. That's been, been that fun. that right there would be marked as my visit biggest mistake and biggest learning tool. Um, if they're not double heads. So let me ask you this: the person you bought those snakes from. Right. You still you still work with him or, or I do not. I I don't have like negative things to say. But it's kind of like you go to a casino and you fucking lose your ass. You probably never go to that casino again. Right, right. It's like right. I'll, I'll not play that slot or not play fucking like you know the, what I mean? like I'll go somewhere else. I guess the problem that I might have, and the thing is, is I could be completely wrong and ignorant to what would be going on, but I haven't seen them produce any. So that's a suspect. Like, right. Yeah. So unless they have and they haven't told, right. you know, and that's a possibility too. Plenty of people are like that. Yeah. Steve Rusis, man, that guy produces some fire. Where's he from? I don't even know, but <laughs> he produces like he has a clown pie project that would like. He's at a point where he can like wholesale clown pies. He makes so many. You know what I mean? Like that's his his nuts. clown clown pie game is insane. So it's like you have guys like that that aren't posting anything. So. I'm glad you brought that up. Can guys like that potential fuck up the whole market? Like, can they put a shift in things that they wanted to because they have so much? Oh, for sure. If they, yeah, I think so. So if that's the case, right? Are we almost leading that? Are we almost headed that way? Because how many other people are going to be sitting on shit like that throughout the next fucking few years? Well, you have to like. Here would be the example: is is uh, Desert Ghost? Do you know how many Desert Ghosts the Bells have? Yeah. You know, like it's. Or will <laughs> that's right like what do you mean dude desert ghosts are so expensive yeah. it's a, it's if you if you are having problems selling your snakes they should just be desert ghosts right. <laughs> duh like they're selling so great you know like so desert ghosts is that way but there are a lot of desert ghosts out there and the project's strong why don't we uh go ahead and fucking read this premature fucking super chat that <laughs> matt summers put up when i told him to wait on super chats <laughs> but fuck it here we go it's troy I don't give a fuck. It is Troy. Troy, Troy, Troy I love you. Troy. I do Big right, fan. Matt, I can't read it, Matt, so go and read it off. I, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Just read it off. Joel, hopeful as well. I hope this podcast reignites you and Adam. Always enjoy your show. Joel, you're one of the real ones, and I've enjoyed getting to know you. Hope you do have a great weekend. Thank you. Dude, Troy. Yeah, best dressed, man. Best dressed. 
dude, I, I talk about how I would go to a show. Okay, the first time I ever saw Troy at a show, I thought it was weird <laughs> as fuck. I was like, dude, who is this guy? Is this a gimmick? You know what I mean? Yeah. But then the next show, he was wearing it again. And then the next show, I was dude. like, let me just go by this guy. Let me see what he what what is this guy's what, yeah, is, what is his deal? Like, what is his deal? Yeah. And it's his fucking, it's his image. Like he is. Best, he's best dressed. Best. Dude, he's best dressed. But he lives by that, bro. 100%. And like, it, he's, he's probably one of the coolest dudes at the entire show. He's fucking amazing. Yeah. So now what I was trying to say is when I see Troy at a show, I'm at the show. Like, when, right. when I say see Troy, I know it's game time. Dude. I get so excited. Troy makes me fuck. Well, that sounds weird. But I'm just saying, Troy is somebody where I'm like, if I see that motherfucker, once I see that dude. bald head in the suit, yeah. it's fucking off. Awesome. Dude, talk about somebody that grinds too. He grinds. Dude. Troy grinds, bro. Troy. Troy goes hard. He's one of dude. the biggest unsung heroes in the game. hundred percent, dude. Yeah. Troy is the sleeper gene. People, he, like, no, for, you know what Troy, I mean? Like, like you, you know, even myself, I, I throw out the Levances and, and Miguel's and all this shit, but Troy, bro, that motherfucker has put in his work, dude. He put in his time. For sure. He's surrounded by some of the best people, if not all the best people in the game. Yeah, definitely. Man, Troy is the fucking man, bro. Dude, big, big fan. Yeah. So shout that out. Was, that wasn't shout out. that wasn't because of the 50 bucks either, buddy. Yeah. You know, you know, I already love you. Yeah. Who do we got? I'm going to Another say 50, let's do it. From, uh, William oh, dude. William? This is William. my entire puzzle. My entire puzzle operation comes from him. Hey, Joel, I have almost 60 eggs. I still haven't hit the <laughs> Yeah, see, there it is. I have almost 60 eggs. I still haven't hit the GHI puzzle. See, there it is with the Sunset Pies. Same thing. Right. Same thing. Dude, William. Yep. Do you know how strong that motherfucker is? Yeah, I think he can like he like Ben Fred's like one thirty five. Dallas cars. Yeah, like yeah, two fifteen. Well, mentally, but like he's like fucking dude. He is a beast. William is a beast. Yeah. dude, he is not little. No, he's no, not. He he's is fucking not refrigerator. Little. He's yeah. huge, bro. He's a fucking refrigerator. Yeah, he don't fuck around. Bro. He's a Mac he's, truck, he's wide, dude. Bro. Yeah, he'll yeah, get you. Um, but only that. I'm just saying, like, man, if you want to talk about people I respect, are the diversity breeders in the game, and you know, somebody like is he ever right? Dude, William is somebody who not only taps into the coolest reptile podcast in the world. You know, he taps into other podcasts that kind of elevates anything, you know, and I respect mm -hmm. that about William, but you know, he's a diverse, respected breeder. And, and it's like, like Joel, like, dude, we're in your office. Like Joel, you have a life other than snakes. Like, yeah. Snakes, snakes, snakes bring joy to your life. Yeah. This is a, but the snakes a are part time. Yeah. yeah. But you're a grind, bro. Like you grind, right? Right, right, right. And, and William, I don't even know what you do for a full time. And I, 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 maybe I should ask you this, but William just produced Northern white lip pythons this year. Yeah, like, you know how many people produce white lip pythons? <clears throat> Ryan Young, that's yeah, it. Yeah, one, one, one person, right? So I'm just saying, like, man, like, just I don't know. I just respect somebody who died. Like, Joel, the fact that you even just have her ticks in another room, no breeding plan whatsoever. No, dude, I just you love them, dude. Love they're them. so cool. And, and a boa, I got the boa, dude. Love yeah, the, boa. the boa that would fucking that wants to oh, kill you. Teacup, man. She's that's her name, dude. <laughs> it, teacup. I've had her for I've had her for 12 years, dude. I had her when she hatched out. Or I mean, I guess she didn't hatch. She got laid. I right. guess technically. Right. Um. Yeah, dude. She's the meanest snake in America. She's got to be at least tied. You know, like she's terrible. I can. And it's a boa at that. I can barely touch her, and she's huge. She's she's got to be like eight nine feet long, dude. And she's like she's big as my thigh. You know, she's massive. Yeah. People think she's bigger than pebbles because of how thick she is. Yeah. And I'm like, no, dude. That snake over there is way bigger. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But yeah, dude, love those snakes. They're so cool. And let me ask you about like, like let's talk about the 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 uh, just like the energy going on in your body when you're working with a snake like that. Like you know, mind you, the ball pythons are awesome, right? But you're not really on edge pulling a fucking ball python tongue. Never, right? not even if it's gonna bite me. <laughs> right, but like. Yeah. When you do something that kind of puts you on edge, you kind of have a respect for it. Like you kind of have like appreciation for it. Yeah. So I guess like philosophically speaking, um, the coolest thing that an animal like that does for you is it allows you to be completely present in your moment and where you're at. Because you have to be 100% paying attention to a snake like that, even though Pebbles is the nicest animal I've ever been around. I'm still always ready for that snake to bite my face off right. because it's better to be like that than not prepared, you know, with that animal. Cause dude, they do, it's a big mouth. They can do some damage. Obviously you've experienced some, some animal bite pain in your day. <laughs> you, can't disclose, you know, it was an Asian water monitor. Yeah. It was a lace monitor. Yeah. Lace, lace monitor. monitor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It was a Gila yeah, monster. You it was a big lizard. Yeah, we'll go with that. 
<laughs> a big lizard. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, you know, like, dude, that's what's cool about him, though. You have to be present. Present's good. I like being present. I like being where I'm at, you know? So, yeah, I love it, man. I love the animals. They're smart. They're friendly. I don't know. They pay attention. They know who I am, I feel like. They could be biased. I don't know. But um, Going back to people knowing who the fuck you are, I feel like you had the presence that you were putting out there for anyone new coming into the game. It was easy to kind of get thrown into state 48 fucking you know because you had miguel you had people just shouting you out like you had like you know yeah it was you it was fun man saying, like, yeah it was fun just, you had people out there like anytime you had a video out people motherfucking were sharing it yeah yeah it was um, it was a good it was a good entry into social media it worked out as of right now obviously we're talking about social media and i can yeah. tell you right now it's different now everyone has everyone has youtube now right everyone right so how does somebody make a better presence out there if they're new to this now like what's in your eyes something that somebody could really do better as far as getting their name out there more. Yeah. Right. It's difficult, man, because I think there's a couple ways to do it. Um, I think there's the content dump. You can content dump and your name will get out there by force. Right. But the problem I see with content dumping is you run out of content pretty quick unless you have 5 million snakes to show, let's say. Um, and so what you end up doing is you end up saying dumb stuff. <laughs> and then people, a lot of times that are hardcore, like, you know, people that are watching this show. Oh, like, when, oh, when JP like, was giving breeder advice and he had his, he didn't have his first class. That's what I'm saying. You God run out, of, you run out of content and you <laughs> say dumb stuff. And then, <laughs> and then people remember that. Oh, right. They don't forget. Yeah. People that are in this, remember that. And the problem is, is what is that rule? 20% of all of your customer base or a, like, 80% of all your customer base comes from 20% of the population. Right. That 20% is us. Right. <laughs> We're the ones buying all the snakes, really. Really. You know? Um, so that's the problem I see with content dumping. It will get your name out there um, after probably like four or five months. You can have a pretty decent following if you're super consistent and you're just saying stuff and posting it. Or I think if you're fairly consistent and you have decent stuff to say and decent stuff to talk about that you actually care about. Uh, people can see it. I think people can recognize when somebody's just trying to make YouTube videos and when somebody's trying to talk about something they love, I why, guess. Why are we so cool though, Joel? Like what, what was it that made us be the homies that we are? It's just timing, dude. No, it was a show, <laughs> motherfucker. It was the show. It was, absolutely. A hundred percent, it was networking at the shows. Yeah, it just 100%. brought us all together. And that is, in my opinion, what I feel like I'm lacking right now. With, you with, are. Without a doubt. You, Miguel, Nick, I mean, fuck, yeah. Harry. You, you, can you guys come back to a show? Yeah, it's – Mark, my, we can, we can say it now, dude. Right now. Next year, dude, I will be at Mini. I, I can't even – I will be at Mini. Nick fucked off every show, I think, besides – Arlington in February, maybe? No, mm -hmm. not even. October. Did you go to Anaheim? Yeah. Okay. We did like that October or Shocker something at Arlington. They can't even tell me what his next show is going to be unless it's local. It's, it's 100. Scary. Nick's next show, so he knows, Sacramento? is is uh, at a minimum Arlington next year. February? February, February Arlington. Better, Nick, better Nick, will be, Nick will be at the Arlington February. I love Nick. Uh, and I'll, I'll for sure be at that show. I, I, can't, I can't wait for it. I had so much fun. I bought a bunch of snakes from Bob Vu. That was a great time. Um, expensive times. Yeah, but yeah. What they mean, okay, you want to talk about a good feeling as much as it's scary to think about if you don't have that kind of money. But when you're in the game and you're able to, how good of a feeling is it to leave with some Bob, Bob Vu heat? Like, oh, dude. It's like, fuck. Dude, it's crazy because Nick found the snake for me, actually. Um, I uh, I was going to – he was uh, – he had this leopard pied – uh, pass hat sunset, 66% has sunset male. And I was like, okay, well, I have this maybe double hat. I might as well get a visual pied pass hat and just see. And then Nick saw this desert ghost on his table and I had no desert ghost at the time. And, uh, dude, he's like, you should add this on there. And I was like, yeah, let's do that too. And threw it on there, dude. And that snake is like a thousand grams. It's only been like eight, nine months, dude. It's a savage. <laughs> so Nick, uh, Nick saved me a little bit on that one. So otherwise I really wouldn't have much desert ghost stuff. Apparently I'm missing out right now on some cool DG stuff, man. Well, I'm jealous. Nick's that fucking Mr. Stranger guy right now. To be he honest. dude, he has a little bit of stranger going on. Yeah. 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 I think a hoarding problem. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's dude. It's crazy, dude. Stranger. I remember when I first saw stranger, like, what was this? Like, you know, when I first got in seven years ago, 
seeing those stranger clowns and stuff over there that uh, Iris Iris was posting. Right. Man, that was a dream, dude. I like if I had a snake like that, dude, I would have been blown away. Um, but you know, I don't know. We finally got stranger last year, so I'm super or two years ago. Oops. So hopefully we can have some on the ground like Nick, man. He has like a little small army of just heat over there right now. It's crazy to me. Well, let's talk about the um the start of the army that you're building. Yeah. Which is quite a bit of stuff. But I will say right now, the one thing that I'm very like holy shit about is the rainbow gene, bro. Dude, rainbow, man. What yeah. the fuck, bro? Yeah. Literally, it's like a DG banana with no freckles. That's what I'm saying, dude. It's it's uh it like I I remember when like I first bought into it, dude. That was it was a ex pretty expensive animal for me. You know, I hadn't bought a male that that was that you was a that. Visual or a head? I bought a visual male. Yeah, I bought a, a visual rainbow male. I bought a super inchy hypo rainbow. The one you uh, showed us. Yep, yep, yep. That was the male you bought. That's the male I bought. Yeah, dude. Um, dude, he was he was like six k. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, he was. It was the most money I spent on like a single male. Like I, I, I spent a lot of money on some females, but. And you came across a picture on the internet or how'd you see this? Thing? Um, do you know, uh, urban constrictors? Yeah. 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 Paul. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah, dude. Uh, I used to talk to him quite a bit and I remember he was like, uh, Joel, you know what you need to do? You need to go and get rainbow in your clown pie project. And I was like, yeah, I think, you know, I think he's onto something. So I started like really looking at rainbow and I got into it because there was like some controversy with the gene. Um, cause it was like, there were some snakes that were popping out that weren't like rainbows. Um, so I think it was linked to another recessive. And as it turns out prior to genetic testing and still prior to genetic testing for certain genes, it takes a long time to figure this stuff out. And so like rainbow kind of had like some like backlash where people didn't know what it was kind of, you know, so there was some like negativity around it uh but the animals that it was producing looked like bananas you know like act like the gene banana not bananas but like so it was producing these snakes that look similar to banana and banana dude as a color palette banana is like the craziest ball python <laughs> dude like the it's nuts, it's that's, nuts that's dude one, that's one of the pinnacle snakes what did mershon just produce oh the hurricane dude the uh, fuck Hur hurricane like, banana clown are you by the way shout out to my boy mershon morris my boy dude. shelby that's my dog right there yeah like dude that snake is insane right and it's a banana so you know to like poke at banana they they change a lot as they age they don't stay like they're hatchlings and rainbow stays so Rainbow seemed like the best direction for me to go because I like that color palette. Um, it's not sex linked and it's recessive. So it's kind of, you know, retain its value a little better as it, as it goes on. It's untapped. Nobody's done a lot with it. It's, um, you know, I don't have any like albino style snake. So I don't blame I, you. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I wasn't like set up with albinos already. So I was like, it's also not, it's not like a Lelic with albino. It's not like a Candino. I know like, I don't, I think Candinos are great. I think right. Candy's like one of the prettiest like snakes. Right. Um, but it, it, it like checks a lot of boxes when I'm looking at investing that kind of money into a gene. Um, so dude, yeah. Can't wait. You know, we hatched out some inchy quads this year, dude, uh, hypo clown pied rainbows. So Hopefully in a couple of years, you know, we can, you know, inchy and pied is like perfect, right? So we're going to get some, you know, mid to low white pieds, hopefully out of that with a uh, clown, hopefully in the mix and rainbow and hypo. So, so Miguel came out with a, uh, like a, a up to date facility tour of Canova and yeah. did a YouTube video and they kind of tapped in a little bit about the white lace. Yeah. And DG. Yeah. They showed some comparisons. Yeah. Literally looks like a fucking step step up from DG. I'm not gonna lie. I it's scary to say, but I'm just saying. Like I, I see I, white lacing clown from what Justin showed at an age. Yep. Compared to the DG clown at age, and yeah, I mean it's not much, but it's something. Like you could see, like oh wow, like yeah, dude. I think uh, lace is. I think probably like 10, 15 years. It's gonna be like insane what lace is bringing to the table. I'm because curious what DG and Lace would do to each other. 
I think fantastic. I think even just single gene lace, yeah, not even the white just, lace, just a, just a lace. Yeah. yeah, I think it would be. I dude, I'm I'm I think I think Justin already has that. White yeah, white lace DG. Yeah, I thought so. Um, dude, it's crazy. If you like to like, you know how you can go on Morph Market and you can like look at past sales. Dude, if you go down there and look at how much a white lace clown sold for back in the day, it will blow your mind why you didn't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, compared to what a single gene lace clown sells for now. Um, it's a cool project, man. Uh, we have that white lace hypo. He went to a lot of girls for us this year. So we have some double head hypo clown stuff that I'm pretty excited for. You know, it's nothing like crazy, but, you know, it's a start in, in the right direction for, uh, for the lace project that was my warm-up before this next con controversial one right. um, give it to me give ultra male is trash <laughs> ultra <laughs> male is trash who are you that's matthew Ooh. summers that's what he, on the way over here matthew Sar was telling me how if anybody is working with ultra male they're, they're, they're a degenerate oh, because they he's don't lying. they don't know what monarch is lying that's slander. what he said lying all right yeah. he told me this at the gas station while i was buying a corn dog yeah wow. Yes. Yeah, no, I could totally see. That sounds like something Matt would say even. That's the weird part. It's like, I mean, no, he didn't physically say it, but he thought I could see in his brain. I could see him for sure. It. For sure. Like, yeah. He's thinking it right now. Yeah. Look at him. Look at this. Look at this sick bastard. He said it twice. There's, you know, he's, anyway. His, his, yeah. dude, the other side of his neck tattoo is going to say Monarch over Ultra Bell. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. You no, nah, dude, Ultra Bell's fantastic. I love Ultra Bell, but, yeah. but, but, but there's starting to be some examples out there. Like, because mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say is, let, let's talk about the people who are still fucking breeding in a barn, and and, and just are, are are really trying to say that Ultra Male and Monarch are the same thing. They're not. Like, can we really just agree at this? I mean, I didn't, I didn't think Ultra Male and Monarch were the same thing six years ago when I first saw it. Because you're Joel. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can tell you right now that wasn't the case like a year, two years ago. Like, yeah, there was so like, much of an argument going on. Yeah, that. and I wanted, dude, I was gonna buy into. Ultra or Monarch. That was, an, and dude, same thing. A lot of bad flack. It's the same thing as Ultra Mel. It, it's overpriced. It's, you know, all the stuff. It's all the same stuff that happened in Rainbow. It's, you know, it's just a candy. It's just a banana. It's just, you know, it's all the same stuff, right? And, you, you know, ultimately just buy what you like, right? If you see a difference, buy it. You know, that's, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, other genes are the same, though, I will say. Can you hit me up on this? Oh, absolutely. All I got to say is go look at fucking Marshall Mendez's Ultra Mel clowns. Okay? That's, yeah, That's like, all I got to say. Dude, what he's doing with Ultra Mel blows my mind. I remember that first time he like, I think it was like a leopard Ultra Mel clown. Um, and I was just like, I think I even wrote him about it. <laughs> Yo, dude, Antoine, how you doing, man? Is Antoine in the, in the yeah. building? Yeah, everyone unfollow Matt. <laughs> oh, guys, I was kidding. Don't, don't do that. Matt's a good guy. <laughs> Do you have any more super chats? Just I know it. I didn't see it. Oh. What did, what do you put? Ten bucks? Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks Ooh. from Antoine? I got something to say about Antoine Hood. What do you gotta say, man? Let me know. I just want to say Antoine is really for the black people. <laughs> I don't want to say he's the representative, but I'm just saying that motherfucker puts everybody on, bro. Oh, 100%, and, and I, dude. I, but I, and I don't, I'm just kind of, it's an inside joke about the black people thing, like the Antoine. I'm just saying that motherfucker looks out for so many people, bro. For and, sure. And I know this for a fact because I know how he works. Like he has, he, he, he separates any kind of bullshit anybody has and he just fucking, he just fucks with people, bro. And, and I can't help but the luck. Dude, I him. remember, um, when I hatched out the GHI puzzle, he made the funniest meme about the ghi puzzle coming out and posted it on his story dude it made me laugh so hard because there's so many people like hating on the project and blah blah <laughs> dude <laughs> and i was just like god dude this is gold this is gold right now um yeah dude big big fan of his let me uh ask you the challenge behind you know because you're talking about how you have quad het stuff that you're producing now right the quad stuff's gonna get dicey man because obviously we're, we're working with more odds yeah other than the genetic shed testing let's talk about people who are investing enough to where the genetic testing could they can't afford it right 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 so i mean like i mean is that should you be smart about that like meaning like understand that if you can't 
afford to genetic test shit that you're producing that don't produce so much? Yeah, right. Yeah. So first off, dude, odds don't fucking matter. First off, dude, you got to give yourself the chance. Right. You know, the chance matters. So like quad, like who cares what the odds are? I don't care what the odds are. The odds don't mean anything to the individual. That's, you know, that's a stat, you know? So my odds are very different is, is my stance, I guess on that. Like, and then on the side of like, the genetic testing thing is brand new and we were, we were pairing for paw sets and stuff like that anyway already. And it hasn't necessarily been a problem. Um, so I don't think it should deter you per se, but I understand what you're talking about when it comes down to the fact that like, I don't know, we briefly mentioned like the number of ball pythons for sale in Morph Market. Like everybody is like really passionate about talking about how that number keeps going higher, not lower. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think that should be looked at less as a negative and more as a positive, because if the number keeps getting higher, that means there's probably more people in the industry. Cause I doubt Justin is hatching more snakes than he was market. hatching last year. Right. So he's not contributing. You know what I mean? There's not like, there's more people in it. That's why there's more ball pythons for sale. Right. You know, it, it's, it's not because one supplier produced 800 more snakes than they did last year. And then that's kind of like the trickle down that everybody produced more snakes and nobody wants more snakes. It's because more people are in it. So this, the number is going to be higher. And, and that's just kind of part of it. Um, so I, I understand that. And then the genetic testing, I think will help with that number. I, I think at a point, I think years down the road, Genetic testing will become more and more affordable as time goes on. Competition will arise. Other people Capitalism will, will do its job. Right. right. More labs. More, more labs. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And the testing will go down and then it will be easier. And then with that ease will come the ease of not taking one snake and then 10 pos hats and breeding that 100% head to all the pos hats and hoping that you hit all those snakes. And then you have all this byproduct. You know, so I think that'll help in the byproduct, I guess, side of things, which I think will help in the overall load on on the industry because there won't be as many pos heads. And we all know like 100 percent heads sell for more and they're more desired. So let's talk about how we were smoking earlier. Am I allowed to say you smoke? Dude, Sorry. hell yeah. Um, you mentioned how this genetic testing could lead to people not even wanting to buy visuals anymore. It could very easily. I, I could. Oh, what's that going to do to us? Yeah. So that's going to change the market again. Shit, you know, it is because you could take like right now, DG's hot, like super hot. Yeah. What you could do right now is you could just buy a het DG that you know is het. That you know is het. Got the proof. From a breeder that you know is producing hets, right. right? And it could be like a clown het DG. And now you could throw that clown to all your females and then just genetic test Desert Ghost. And I realized Desert Ghost might not be a genetic test right now that's available but I can assure you it will be very soon. Right. You know, like somebody's already working on that test because it's everywhere, you know, and, and it's a high dollar item, high investment, high yield, high probability somebody's going to pay for the genetic test. So right. it, it's coming, you know what I mean? So it's, it, it's going to change maybe if you're gunning for a HET project right. on, a, on a budget a little bit, you know what I mean? My uh, co-founder of uh, Best Hair Club for Men in the Reptile Industry, Khalil, <laughs> yes. 514 Reptile. Yes. He uh, has to say that uh, he's excited for all this testing, but he doesn't believe that this will replace the visuals. Right. Because having visuals will really help the odds. And I believe that. Yes. It's going to help the people who are on a budget. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. Like Anyone new is on a budget. Everybody new is on a budget. Right. right. And now you can be on a budget and, and get yourself in the door with very powerful animals quickly. And you can do it at a rate where you don't have to, like, you have six snakes, they're all 66% head. You, you genetic test all those snakes, you only had three. Now you can either sell those as pets, do whatever you're going to do with those snakes, and you're not feeding them for three more years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so now, like, you cut your costs, and you've cut your workload, and you're a new breeder. That's perfect. You know what I mean? So with that, like... Personally, I like visuals, obviously, you know, like that's the only thing I usually hold back. That's, you know, that's how I 
built a whole collection is around visuals, but, yeah, but for somebody who has no foundation, no foundation and at a different era, right. this is a different really era. Different era Maybe I would have done things differently if genetic testing was here, if I'd started today. I mean, we're talking about big money, not guaranteeing shit. That's what I'm so saying. It's like, man, right. like here's, here's another thing too, that I talk about all the time. It's like, okay, let's say you have some, say you have, say you have a few hundred thousand or whatever. Let's say you have a good amount of money to invest. Right. What makes you think you should go and fill your room up with professional freedom reader racks? Right, and, right. Put, and put 20, 30 K into that before, yeah. even the, before you can even know you can keep these animals. Right. Right. Like, and, and, you know, all that shit is just a fucking status thing. Like whatever oh, it is sure. that you're doing to make you feel like you need to invest in freedom breeder racks is you're trying to look cool. Dude. Okay. So in freedom breeders defense, because I am a freedom breeder fanboy. I love freedom breeder. Um, Shout out to Jesse. You're my boy. Yeah. My sponsor freedom breeder, by the way. I love freedom breeder. <laughs> yeah, I love you. No, I know what you're saying though, but there, there's a progression, right? There was a progression for me. I started in homemade racks, all my shit. I made out of plywood, you know, home Depot, racks, Home Depot, dude, racks, I bought it. Yeah, dude. I bought those plastic ones and then like cut the, the plastic down to where the tubs would just slide under. Like, you know, there's a progression to it. Freedom breeder racks. Of course I want to. Oh, big fan of M&M's. If anybody knows me. And this is this is a this is a variety bag that I didn't even know existed. Oh it has and he has a bag at his desk. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have peanut M Ms in my desk, dude. Oh, I love M Ms. Um, I don't even know what we're talking about, dude. Uh, genetic testing. Uh, genetic so testing. Poor, uh, helping the poor people. Helping. <laughs> well, poor freedom breeder. Freedom breeder. Oh, freedom breeder. Sorry. Dude, Thanks, love. Jeff. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> my I have a I have a That's six nice. six year old freedom breeder rat, dude, mm -hmm. and I bought. Recently, I bought like levels because you can buy levels of Freedom Breeder. I bought a new level for the top. Six years later, their, their form hasn't changed. It dropped right in. You know what I mean? Wow. And what can you say about a company that is that consistent? Yeah. They're you know? The best. They're the best. Yeah. They're the best. They're so the I love them. The game. 100%, dude. Yeah. And I'll pay that Nike price for those Freedom Breeders. Motherfuckers in UK pay the Nike price. Do the shipping. Get that <laughs> shit over there. Bro, okay, was it Will? Yeah, Will. Will Moros, okay, in Canada. You know how much they pay to get that shit shipped to Canada, bro? I believe it. Oh, like just as much as the racks. Hey, Freedom Breeder, we have trucks that drive to Canada pretty frequently. So oh, there you maybe go. we can Tap cut into you a deal. Let's figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, listen, I, I only speak with experience and you know, having friends like you and Miguel who have these professional racks, I just knew I wasn't in your guys' area. Like I was not where you guys were at. And and in many different levels in your life, in your snake collection, I just appreciate where I was at. So I had to tell myself, what can I do to stay relevant and keep these snakes where I could breed them and keep them healthy? For sure. And I would see other people who had budgeted racks. Like, yeah, yeah. So you know what it was? I think Ozzy. Aussie boys had some some sort of like partnership with a guy Grohl, some some guy in the UK, uh -huh. and he put everything over newspaper. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's why I use newspaper to this day because at first, you know, a lot of people talk shit like, "Oh, you know, nice deal on the orange juice," and I'm like, "Motherfucker, <laughs> I paid no money on substrate ever. This is all free fucking like, newspaper, right?" Yeah, yeah. Chips expensive. How much money that saved me throughout the last six years? <laughs> I mean, I, I paid for cocoa chip on you know enough. My, my hatches are on cocoa chips, but. Probably enough to buy a DG clown. I guess who's DG games up. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Matt knows. But I'm just saying, like, dude, be smart. Like, right. Like, right. Like, 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 I mean, like, I think if a fuck, if my snake looks good, if, yep. if, if I could take it outside and I'm getting all these fucking compliments, yeah, yeah it's on newspaper. What? What, yeah. motherfucker? What? Yeah, dude. This is my money, not yours. As it turns out, like, this is going to sound bad, but they are just snakes, right? Like, they thrive. I mean, it's... They're, they don't know it's newspaper. That's what I mean. They're not they, like, hey, uh, really? This is expired this is, paper. This is gross. Like, fuck, right. Are you kidding me? They thrive under the worst conditions in the world. That's why the ball python is such a good snake because it's so hardy. That's why new keepers are honestly the future of this because the worst keepers in this game were the old keepers. Right. I'm not fucking lying to you, man. Right. I can they know that. it's a the old keepers before, like, dude, we're animal lovers. And right. Nothing against the old keepers. Right, right, definitely. Those motherfuckers knew what those snakes could get, what they could go through. What they can go through. They, and they're like, fuck, it's been, damn it. Look, as long as they have water, I don't need to change that shit. That shit could dude, be there fucking for six months. Did you see Dave Kaufman's video on the ball pythons? Yeah, that's and, a third world country. Dude. No, I know, but, like, that snake's thriving right. in those in, conditions. In, the dirt, in, in 100, 100 degrees. That's what I mean. In the dirt. It's thriving in it. Yeah. 
So it's like, dude, they can go through so much, right? So, I mean, you know, but betting I mean, is but arbitrary. But they shouldn't go through so much. Like, they shouldn't. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, you could give them a really good yeah. life. But yeah. But just by giving your steak multiple water changes a week. Right, dude. Yeah, fresh water is a big deal. Dude, it's such a big deal. Yeah, fresh water is kind of a big deal. I've been pissing people off lately. I don't even fuck like if you do weekly water changes you're a piece of shit yeah fresh water I, I say that with all mj energy if yeah. you do once a week water changes you're a piece of shit I, yeah. I wish you i wish you get fresh water once a week yeah dude i'd really do i hope one day you get stuck somewhere and you have fucking you get once a week water <laughs> dude i do i agree yeah dude uh you. water do. changes are a big deal and, and it'll increase productivity too with water changes it increases sheds uh, hydration is hydration. huge in shedding. Why, why, why is people, your shedding right? Because you don't want to drink that shit Because it doesn't work. Right, right. Dude, shedding, like, we live in a pretty arid area around here. I mean, pre this Prescott's all right, but, like, in the winter, dude, it's not. It's so dry, it's dry here. Yeah, yeah right. it's so dry here. And so, the, you know, you saw that, like, banana today had a bad shed. Um, we get that. But at the same time, dude, I didn't spray that animal. I didn't do all the things that I usually do. She had like a pretty dang good shed for being completely dry right. because she was hydrated. Right. You know, like, and that's a big part of it. Um, you know, hy hydration is a big deal. I mean, another big deal we talked about that kind of put a funk in your breeding season. I think it was this year, last year, was with the fact that you couldn't keep tabs on the locks. Like yes. you were pairing animals, yeah. but you were gone for a couple of days. Yeah, dude, it was... All the animals used to be here in this office. Right. Uh, we have like a separate room in the back. Um, they all used to be here and we're like, you know, 15, 20 minutes away. So I pair animals at the end of my, you know, doing whatever I'm doing today, throw the animals in, I dip, you know, I come back the next day. Maybe the snakes are apart, maybe they're not, but I don't really know what happened for, you know, 20 hours. Like they could have locked been done or they could have not been locked and not, I don't use an ultrasound um ignorant ignorant of me to not use an so ultrasound you, will you you admit that i it's hurting you by not having ultrasound i think i would be much a, a much more effective team if i had an ultrasound yeah and my wife is like a echo cardio okay, yeah that's why you should have it so it's like she can use an ultrasound like she uses an ultrasound on humans all day to it's do like, like being surgeries. somebody who needs like flagell or something your wife's a fucking bad yeah, yeah like, exactly uh, <laughs> yeah right like write wait, the script bitch <laughs> wait a second <laughs> Yeah, so I could just hand her the probe and like just be like, eh, and she would just do it, you know. Right. So it's dumb of me, and she can like buy like I think she can get like hookups on ultrasounds. So uh, uh, hello, <laughs> yeah. So it's like you know, it's dumb of me. Uh, Nixon, I think, was in here. He's a he works, I think, in a similar. I think he's echocardio too. Um, but yeah, you know, so I need an ultrasound, but I just do it by sight, eyes, you know. I have a small enough collection where, where you can manage it. yeah, I know every snake still. Like I know, I know, I don't need to ID them. I know what they are. Right. You know, we have 61 snakes. So less hatchlings and the four retail, you know, big snakes. Right. Um, so I know, I know where they're at. I know where they're at in the rack, you know, and, and I know most people are probably like that. What's your, what's your preference when it comes to pairing? And what I mean by that is like, let's say, you're in full full control. You have the time to to observe. What is it that you look for? What is it that you make a change when it comes to like pairing up a male to a female? Like, and what I mean by that, like, what what, what are what are the the signs in your eyes that you look for? That the like them that that it's going to go the distance, right? That opposed to not working, out. right, right, right. Because like, let's say you have a male, like like you know, a lot of people. Lot, I don't have an ultrasound. Yeah, right. You don't want to waste that male. Dude, you right. don't want to fucking just leave them there, right? right? So if you don't have an ultrasound, like what are signs to look at to, you know, do right by that male versus just leaving them? Right. I, I just pair, man, to be honest. Yeah. You know, like but I do you pair no locks and like take them out or like it's do anything like that. I do I mean? like I I'm on. Yeah. I'm on the side that pairing creates ovulation. Right. right. You know, mm -hmm. um, so I pair early, usually around now. When in reality, my animals usually don't lay until July, you know. So I usually start pairing now ish, just to get the just to get the just to get it start going. Yeah. And then with that, I'm usually just like recognizing, like you're saying, like I'm looking at, are they like laying on each other? Are they by each other? Are they opposite ends of the tubs? Like what's going on? Fucking bull, uh, you know, right. belly, um, uh, you know, all that right. shit. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm like I'm, I'm looking for like visual signs of like they're into each other, basically. You know. And then beyond that, 
I usually <laughs> this this will like when I can, I pair more than one male, you know, for, you switch it up for mean? a lot of times. Yeah, I, I usually put more than one male to a female, um, even though if it's a even though it's a male that could potentially fuck up what you're trying to do. Right. Ooh. Once it usually can't, I guess, is I as I. I, I'm kind of in a position where I have usually two males that can go to one female. And the other side of that, though, is because it gets tricky because we're working with a lot of recessives. So the male has to have some kind of defining feature. Like I can double pair the super inchy hypo rainbow with an animal that's nothing because every single one of his animals are going to be inchy. Right. So as long as inchy isn't in the other male pairing, I'm completely fine. Even if it's a dual sire, I'm completely fine. Because every single inchy will be the het rainbow hypo. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like I, I kind of double book in a lot of situations like that. And I've found that as time has gone on, the second male is always the one that breeds. Right. Yep. It's always the one that takes it. Nine times out of 10 for and me. Is it nine out of, or supposedly I heard nine out of 10 times, the last male to lock is the one that, that takes That's it. That's how it feels. Yeah. That's how it feels. It feels like, because I've had a male lock like four or five times. And then I just like kind of randomly go in there and toss in like something. I'm like, this would be kind of sick too. How much have you gotten both of the males in the clutch? I, we've done that twice. That's happened. Yeah, we've done That's that twice. Happened to me this year. It was yeah, crazy. I couldn't believe it. It's a weird thing, right? Yeah, it's so a weird thing. I had the uh, the leopard leopard fire clown paired to my super pastel yellow belly. Right. But before him, it was my my uh, Enchi asphalt 100 head clown. Right. Right. Okay? So I hatched out like. Like like three leopard fire firefly yellow belly leopard clowns. Yeah, okay. And then I then I've hatched out two firefly yellow belly edgy clowns. Right. So I got edgy right. and leopard in both in 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 the clutch. Yeah, which is Fucking ultimately nuts. so cool. I'll take it. I okay. love it. That's the other thing is, dude, dual sires are so sick. I was praying all year for a dual sire with the rainbow. Right. Like I want to get visual clowns here and some hats. Right. You know, like I right. was praying for dual sire. Right. Um. Because, you know, we don't have a lot of snakes, so clutches matter. And it would be cool to have three eggs, <laughs> inchy, and three eggs, you know, maybe one of them is a clown, you yeah. know, something like that, you know. So I love it. I love doing that. So, but, dude, it can get it can get tricky, obviously. Like, you got to really be paying attention. Like, Nixon was just saying he uses supers as backups. Yeah, you know, you can really do it with supers. Right. Supers is a, a really easy way to do it. Um, that's a good fucking – that's a good good tip right there. Use yeah. Use supers as backups. Yeah, use supers as backups because you – you're gonna you're gonna know you're gonna know you're you're like and this is like i guess kind of going back on what i was saying just pairing to pair but right. like use something that you want right. <laughs> you right. know like use you know don't go to a normal right <laughs> right like you know use or something a that, hat. yeah don't <laughs> no, no, no genetic skin test yeah dude don't be doing like you know silly stuff and then being wondering why you can't sell your 19 normals for a hundred dollars you know that's just not gonna happen you know and it, the other thing too is like Dude, this is like dovetailing, obviously, in a different topic. But, dude, you can't sell, or it's going to be extremely difficult to sell the the normals on Morph Market. That's a hard sell. Online sales are much easier with higher end stuff. Yeah. In person sales are much easier with low end stuff. Right. You know, at shows. So, like, people are saying they're not selling anything. Like. Two, are you vending all the time? Because vending yeah. is a big part of this. The and lower end shit goes at shows. Goes, yeah. And I know it doesn't just fly off the shelves. Like, I understand. Like, this is, like, money's different than it was two years ago. Like, right. this is going to be a weird gotta time. Got to adapt. Got to adapt, right. You know, so, you know, be uh, be greedy when people are afraid, which would be now, and be fearful when people are greedy, which was a year ago. You know, I believe that was a Warren Buffett thing. Or how about fucking be generous? <laughs> Right. How about like, you know what? God damn it. Yeah, I can sell this, but I have somebody who's been supporting me this whole fucking time. I'm going to put this in their hands. You know what I mean? Like, dude, they ain't going to fucking hurt you. I have. It's not going to hurt you. Miguel's done shit like that for me. Yeah, dude. I have a couple animals that like I'm teetering on the fence of just like sending them to a few people that I know really want in the project, first of all. Well, who, I mean, tell me, what are you talking <laughs> and, about? And, you know, so. <laughs> Because it's it's multifaceted, dude. Send in an animal like that to somebody that's like really into it, dude. They're gonna do something cool with it, and oh, that is. Oh, I know that, you're talking about. That's only gonna help you. You you're know getting, what I mean? You're getting, a, 
You got a certain steak that somebody wants. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude. I have a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I have one that somebody really, like has been has been kind of hitting me up, and I feel like, dude, it's crazy because what he could do with this snake and what I can do with this snake is like, I feel bad for the snake. You know, like <laughs> the snake could like kill it over at his place, but really? I'm so like greedy with it that really? I don't want to send it. You but know, that's the beauty of this. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, just to have anyone at that level wanting that snake from you. Yeah, it's like you know you have something yeah so you know joel you're a smart guy i mean you're not you're not i mean well, we don't know that you're not i mean i'm just saying it's like, unproven but you're not yeah. against a good will but you know you're not here to buy it to start a good will you know what right, I mean? like, right, right. fair <laughs> like enough you're yeah. thinking of your own fucking legacy and, absolutely and, yeah and dude. That's what's smart. i'm competitive i'm i'm a i'm you're a closet just, competitive person with the boutique style like you're right. not you're not mr blasting out clutches you're not mr fucking yeah you're doing you're very very dialed into what you have yeah it's tight it's a very it's tight, tight thing yeah but tight is okay I love it. Big what fan of tight. Not yeah. a good thing. It's I haven't experienced right, a, Matt, a single a basket. single moment. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 dude. It's concise. Let me see your key. All right, I don't ever do this, but guys, got a segment right now. Five minutes with Matthew Summer. Matthew, you're gonna sit right here. Oh, you're gonna sit next to Joel. I want you to bring something up. Matthew Summers, ladies and gentlemen. Take it over, Matt. Hey, dude. How are we doing? Good, good to see you. Guys. Yeah, dude. It's been a while. What's it like seeing? People you sold snakes to pair up and produce snakes that you sold. Uh, that's probably, you know, obviously I'm not going to say that's stupid, right? <laughs> you know, but fundamentally, dude, it's probably one of the coolest things because I, I don't know. I've, I've mentioned this like in the past. I know a lot of people feel the same way. Uh, like we were talking about, I don't have a lot of snakes. I can't do every project and I'm a huge snake nerd, dude. I love, like I spend... You know, everybody that's still here watching this right now spends too much time looking at snakes. Yeah. You know, so it's so cool to be able to see different projects that you wouldn't have thought of. Um, and then the uh, the ability to see that you sexed the snake right, <laughs> that you produce a snake that does produce, you produce a snake that eats, you took care, you know, like Every, the right genes, yeah, right genes. Out. Yeah, dude, all this stuff, dude. These are milestones that you don't think about when you're jumping into this because everything is extremely complicated right now. There are so many genes on so many snakes that aren't there that you think are there, um, and vice versa. Snakes Especially that with you being like a yellow belly gravel guy, yeah, dude, it's difficult, right? Right, yeah, proving some of that stuff out takes a long time. Um, but it's cool they decoded the yellow belly complex. I asked that because. What, I think like the third or fourth snake I ever bought was from Joel. Yeah, dude. And I just paired up this year. So. Yeah, that's exciting, man. I'm also, excited. I to don't see hate that. Ultra Mail. That was a lie. <laughs> that was that was not a lie. Okay. <laughs> He's insane did, at this whole time. I, I did say I like Rainbow more than Ultra Mail. I will admit that. Okay. Well, I mean, who doesn't, right? So that makes sense. <laughs> now I gotta go. Good. I gotta go now. Matthew Summers, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Is this the gold key? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a gold one. Gold key, dude um matthew summers what a guy huh yeah dude i gotta say man like i uh i i hold people like matthew summers dear to my heart as you should bro people switch the fuck up in this man quickly and, quickly and, and um what i mean by that joel the reason why i'm so happy to be here in front of you hang out with you um is because you're part of that original crew of people that i respected yeah. i enjoyed being around and uh you're still here to this day man and, and I, I respect you for that but you know my boy matt man like he's loyal as shit um and yeah he, the thing is he anyone i have something to talk highly about like he's right there with me you know right because he studies the same people like i didn't know he got his first snake or one of his first snakes yeah there. dude it's crazy huh what a fucking trip yeah dude it's a weird deal yeah it's cool man uh and it was a cool snake he got a cool snake i right. think from me you yeah. know or what i thought was cool like it was a snake i wanted to keep yeah you know so um hopefully it proves out right in the right direction for him when did really the whole like side of you knowing that you're putting other people on really kind of cross reference into your head like when did you realize that like god damn i'm actually like what i'm doing is actually benefiting the hobby at this point like you know like you know creating people motivated like me and matt like when did you did that ever click to your head that you're doing that yeah, I think that's a weird thing to think about. <laughs> you know, like well, I'm asking you. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, huh? Um, I don't know if I've directly like maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I've like motivated. Oh, I got a better question. When did this happen? 
Yeah, dude, this. The hand. Because I feel like that was this, it. That this was the legacy start. Yeah, it was, dude. That is, yeah. Dude, that is such an iconic, like, it's just a simple, hey, guys. Yeah. But nobody's done that. Like, that's your move, bro. Yeah. Nobody to this day has ever jacked that move. And if you do, I'm coming after you. <laughs> yeah, dude. So it, uh, I'm just, you know, in a, in a former life, I was dumb. <laughs> you what? know yeah so i was just you know like this is how how dumb can you wave and this is about as dumb as you can wave you know just like that flat hand right so that's just kind of <laughs> where it thought... stemmed from it's like you know people like wave you know so i just flat hand all closed dude just hey you know it's stupid it's so stupid but uh, it's effective and it makes people laugh a little bit. So, so okay, here's here's the thing. what show was it then that you were getting love at? Because I know you get show you get a lot. Of, I've seen it. So, what was one of the first shows where you were getting love at? And you're like, whoa, this is cool, dude. My my favorite show is the original Pomona that I went to. That was hands down the, best. the best. Yeah, dude. Like 2018, 2019. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like know. I really knew anybody. Yeah. Uh, and I went there and uh, Sea Serpent was there. Chris, yeah. Chris and I, I picked up an incubator for him from him and he like dude he like invited me to come to the table at the auction I'd never even been to an auction and then I like you know talked to Miguel like I you know I'd been talking to Miguel like through YouTube and like crap like that and I met Miguel and then we all go to the auction dude and it's just like it's a fucking shit show dude to get it's a madhouse dude it's I like spent yeah, I spent so much money on it. I tried to spend so much money on these unicorn slippers. And Miguel, like, like dude, I, I think that, yeah, I think they went for multiple thousands of dollars. And then that's kind of, yeah. that's how I, like, met everybody. Because I was yeah. one of the idiots that was, like, bidding also, you know? Yeah. So, like, it indoc indoctrinates you into, like, the club a little bit, you yeah, know? I remember, going I remember to the that. first time I was, I was so, like, caught into the moment. I accidentally bid and I had no money. Yeah, dude, you can broke. do that. And I you was can like, oh, chill, dude. Like, yo, like, you're not them. And I was like, I just need to stop. You know? Dude. And luckily, I didn't get, I didn't win. And I, right. that was my very first Pomona. I think that was 2017 or 2018. Dude, you can spend some money at those auctions, man. You can spend some money, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, but it all goes to US ARC, so whatever, right? Those auctions are really designated for people making money within the hobby. They are, it's, yeah. It's also a way for you to show your appreciation for the and, hobby. And, and like Miguel, he came in and cleared motherfuckers out. Like, yeah, it was his second year really established, and he outbidded everyone at US Art. And he wanted to, dude. Like, he was like, I'm here to fucking just, it's, nope, I'm gonna fucking win it's everything. It's fundamental to his success, I think. Not, you know, fundamental might be strong, right. yeah, but it was a, I think, a big aspect of part of it because. Dude, everybody at the auction is in the industry. So if you if you come into an auction and you're willing to spend money on this industry, you will you will get noticed. Put it this way: if you come into an auction and you're at a table, you should be happy. You're in the you're in the right fucking place. If That's you're at yeah, a table. absolutely. Yeah, but you're also in a place where you better do something. You better about spend. It. Yeah, you, you better, better be contributing to the U.S. ARC because that's what it's really all about. But that's you what know? I realized too. Because like, dude, I, I you know money wasn't. I mean, God, I came into this game really broke. I was in a really fucking rut in my life. Right. But I met Miguel and I, I saw like, I just saw the potential. Like I, yeah, I saw what I wanted to be someday in this hobby. Yeah. And I am for sure. a fucking goal member with us arc. Like I, 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 I mean, I'm not going to spend no five G's on slippers. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but, dude. Yeah. But like maybe someday I will. Fair like, enough, maybe, dude. You know I mean? Yeah. I do one day. Yeah. So I'm just saying like, I am more than happy to give us arc what this entire hobby is giving me and that's right. happiness bro right dude and, for you know, sure and, and what's crazy is like god damn man i just had a podcast last night about you know the the real destroyer of this hobby and you know there's just legislations that are popping up bro that you know it's scary like it's like imagine not being able to send your ball python across state lines yeah dude imagine it's uh... have, not, imagine fuck it there's certain counties that don't even allow ball pythons yeah you know what's crazy is when i first got uh my retic i drove to california and i went to jay bruiser yeah i went to prehistoric pets and i bought oh, my retic prehistoric death. yeah you know didn't know a lot at the time <laughs> things were alive then. i didn't know like you know she had mites you did okay wow this was not premeditated so the snake that you brought home from just from from prehistoric death came home with mites 
It is she did pebbles. And matter look, of fact, he's not here to fucking throw it. Joel's no, trying yeah. to be, he's trying to be very respectable right now. Yeah, she, she did have mites. Thank you. Thank she you. she one hundred percent had mites, and Fuck. you know, I didn't didn't know that at the time. Very green. Uh, just like everyone. This else. is like the my second year kind of breeding. I really wanted a retic. Always wanted one. Um, my now wife and I drove out to California and we got pebbles and she's the coolest snake I've ever had. So I am grateful that I have that snake. He made the snake. He, you know, she's awesome. She's my favorite. Snake. Pebbles. Yeah. She's my favorite snake. Did she, did she have mites on her? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, she did. Right. You know, and you know, she, mites, mites are part of the game. The truth is undisputed. <laughs> throw that, throw that, throw that comment up right now. I got, I got a next topic I want to bring up. This is perfect. You ever heard of this podcast before? <laughs> Which one? First one right here. Bullshit? Yep. Yeah, dude. We're gonna I that, we're gonna put that comment up there for me, Matty Boy. Let's take a look at this. When I honestly when I was first getting into snakes, dude. Anytime, Matt. Here we go. Somebody said they couldn't hear you. Who? I can't hear you. How about that? Um Sean Bradley. Yeah, dude. I I when I when I first was getting into snakes, dude, he had bullshit podcasts, right? Yeah. Um I listened to probably every single episode. Of, You're not the of, only one, bro. Like of, people, people listen to this guy, bro. And, but, dude, but I'm talking about from the era where he started. Yeah, dude. He had he had one of the best. I'm a realist, huge fan of Ben Rennick. Oh, yeah. Shout he to was, oh, rest in peace, Ben Rennick, man. Yeah. And, it, dude, the way he was doing things is like how I try to be. Is like I guess how I look at it, and There's I never a lot of people's mentors. Bro. Yeah, I never even like really talked to. Him. I talked to him about these het sunsets one time, right? So like I never even like talked to him. But dude, the way he had everything set up, this, you know, Will Philippeck, he he was with Ben, you know. I didn't so know that. yeah, so like a lot of respect for Will because I know yeah. he knows a lot of you know, right? So um, he had this episode with Ben Reddit, kind of loved it, you know. So um, yeah, it was cool stuff, man. It's cool stuff. I want to say, you know. Somebody like Sean, um, who was a part of an era before the whole so social media blow up, right? Right. And to be a part of something that, like, legendary, you know, it, it, he has to have a lot of information that he that he retained from, you know. And you know, I, I've spoken to Sean over the phone, and Sean has nothing but multiple respect on your fucking puzzle game, bro. Like Sean knows. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he's sort of, you know, he, he started it. Right? I want I want to know more about that because I don't know the story behind right. that. And, and Sean, I know you'll have your moment, trust me, but I want to hear from you on how the puzzle game came into State 48's collection and and, right. whatnot, and, and, and because puzzles, it's the buzz, bro. Motherfucker is all about puzzles now. Yeah, man. But you were about puzzles before the buzz and puzzle. You know what I mean? So I think we got a decent jump on it. You know, we didn't get the volume. I feel like a lot, some people got, obviously, you know, it wasn't in, in our interest. Um, but yeah, you know, from this, it's, you know, who knows, maybe I'm fucking wrong here. But from what I understand, Sean sold the animals to a customer. Customer produced these like wild ass snakes. Sean got the animals back uh, and then produced it. Right? right. So puzzles came in through Will. Um, Will Philippic? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Got Dang, all. Hey, Will? I got, player Will. Yeah, dude. I got all my original hats from Will. I got my GHI hat from Will. Um, and that produced, it's funny because he said earlier, you know, he's produced 60 clutches or 60 eggs and he hasn't hit the GHI. Um, I think it was our first year breeding the GHI hat he got from us and we hit the GHI puzzle. So that was, that was super convenient for us. But, um, you know, all my stuff came from him and then, uh, reptile creations, all my like visual girls, my Mojave puzzles and all that kind of stuff. My pastel Mojave puzzle. My hypo puzzles all came from Adam and Miguel. So, you know, shout out to them, obviously Dr. producing Adam, some crazy you know. stuff. Um, and then that's just kind of where it came from. But Will had like insights into like the hidden gene Woma. You saw the hidden gene Woma puzzle today. Yeah. Um, that's a unique animal. It's, it's, it's not going to blow your mind when you first see it, but when you look at the levels of it, it's, it's pretty crazy. So, Puzzle's been in there for about four years, five years. Um, we produced puzzles last year. We hit the GHI puzzle. And then this year we hit, I don't know, a couple others. And uh, it's been good, man. Puzzles have been good. I hope this red one is good. Is that it has, 12 hands? It has a horse on it. 
It's 14 hands. 14 hands. It's two more hands than I thought. <laughs> 14 horsepower. <laughs> now, yeah, dude, let me let me have some 14 hands really yeah. quick while we finish this now, puzzle saga. The puzzle game, right? Obviously, a lot different you getting into the puzzle game because of the time. But how does somebody get into the puzzle game nowadays? Like, and what I mean by that, what's the smartest move into the puzzle game in your eyes? Smartest move into the puzzle game was just buy one, like start. So just getting a visual or a heads, or what do you mean? Um, I guess it depends on what you really want to do. I, with recessives, I really like. I would, when it comes to females, I would like just twice, just boom, boom. Yeah, double tap. I would like to have a visual female over a three or four codom hat female. I guess is how I look at it. Um, because I'm going to keep a female longer and the three or four codom animal will likely be my male, you know, Lily, get out of my room right now. <laughs> so I don't know, dude, getting into the puzzle game. I think the, the easiest way, I think the, the cheapest way is heads. I think heads are very mispriced for the value that the visual puzzles are selling. I think your greatest potential for profit is through heads. I guess. I think your greatest potential for creating animals that no one has seen is to just dive into some visuals because the heads over the next couple years are going to exponentially increase in the amount of codoms and things that are mixed into them. And so if you could get a visual female now, in two, three years from now, the power of the hets is going to be, I think, 10 times stronger than it is now. Now, what do you think about this saying how people vote with their dollar? Right, right, for sure. So I feel like when it comes to, I mean, obviously the skin uh, shed genetic test will change this in the future, but for right now, you should be very wise on who you spend your money with, right? Like, especially if it comes to heads. I think so. Yeah, I think I think heads are a big deal. Yeah, it's I mean heads heads could bring you the dream. Oh, but dude, we've we've produced some crazy stuff on heads. You know, I even I, head I'm, to head, head to head. Yeah, dude, our first year was head to head, double head, clown pied. My first season breeding, I had a leopard, yellow belly, double head, clown pied, bred to a fire, double head, clown pied. And we produced a fire clown pied and we produced a yellow belly fire clown het pied. We produced a yellow belly fire pied and we produced a fire pied and they're all 66% heads, you know, and that was our first year. Yeah. Those animals we sold paid for the next investment, you know, and it wasn't double heads. We, we got a visual with a head, you know, this is like we were saying, this is a time game. So you're trying to, cut the clock as fast as you can yeah you know that's what makes it fun like doing all these stupid like well if you breed a head to a visual and then a visual to a double head then you're you know but that's the cool thing about quads it actually increases your chance mathematically to produce a double visual right well there exactly you know mathematically speaking it increases your chance which doesn't make sense but it increases your chance to produce a double visual now you know the the whole increasing chances of profit right and what i mean by that after a while motherfuckers are making some money you know but then we hit certain points in the market where money isn't where it's supposed to be at or it's not happening um how are some things that people could be prepared for something like this and what i mean by that i mean it's hard for you because you don't do this for a full time like you 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 have yeah. something that pays your bills right but if you have somebody who is doing this and has years where they do good but then years obviously it's not guaranteed right yeah so what's the best way to stay relevant without having to worry about certain things not being hot in, in a market or something like that i mean do you lean on diversity and work with other species like and what i mean right. by that if you are going to do animals for, for a full time should you consider geckos too maybe or should, should, should right, you consider right. something else that people are going to like other than ball pythons right like, think about you like let's like let's just say we we said fuck this okay not fuck this office but Let's just say the business behind this office wasn't existing. Yeah. And it was just the snakes. It was just you doing the snakes. Yeah. Do you think you'd be doing a lot more than just ball pythons? <clears throat> I, yes. Short answer. Yes. Be smart about it, right? Yeah. Short answer would be yes. 
long answer would be, I think it's more valuable, probably nowhere near as cool or as fun to invest your money in things that everyone that has a ball Python uses. That would be the easiest way to make money because there are a ton of people who have ball pythons and there are a ton of people that don't want another ball Python, but there are a ton of people that want X for their ball Python. Right. And so it's like the same mentality that like Aerosmith didn't make any money compared to Fender guitars. Fender made all the money right. selling the guitars, thinking that people could be Aerosmith. Do you know what I mean? Right. So like the profit to me really would be in rats, caging, innovation and in caging, insects, innovation and genetic testing. Like that's where yeah, like that's the real, the that's real money ticket. is. Yeah. Do you notice like Justin's instituting clutch? You know, like the money isn't in necessarily always the animals anymore. What it's, surrounds the animals. It's what surrounds the animals where you're going to make timberline, timberline, dude, timberline mm. at the auctions. Yeah, he shits on You want to talk bro. about like Miguel Shitting thinking he was bidding a lot on stuff, no, dude. Timberline, 20K one, item. 20K one item, dude. 30K one item. He sells crickets. Yeah. He sells crickets. He's the most balling motherfucker in that building. I dude, can tell you that right now. That's what I'm trying to say. Timberline's loaded. Yes. Ancillary goods. Absolutely. Yeah. That's innovation. Like, but you know, here's the thing we're talking about being loaded and respected. Like he's like, like what he does is actually feeding the hobby in a good way. hundred percent. Right. Instead of versus right. like your typical, like think about the people who lead this industry into as far as the YouTube world goes. Right. Probably some of the worst people we have in this hobby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You it's know, that, that's because it's YouTube. That's not the hobby. That's YouTube. Right. You know, that's social media. Social media is very different than this hobby. But Timberline attracts the whole pet industry. Like Timberline has an example to show all around good good stuff what they're doing. You know right. what I mean? Right. You don't get kind of damped into the whole I'm just saying, like the the the, the fucked up thing about like we're talking about Timberline inspiring the pet industry as a whole. Yeah. But we're talking about how others could indus could uh, how others can inspire too. Um, absolutely right and the thing is it's like we should attract more animal lovers not people who are fucked up animal thinkers yes and, and what's crazy is like there's people who could come out and i, I don't want to sound repetitive but it really bothers me how somebody could come out with a youtube channel showing live feeding videos oh gross man but but it, there's a community out there for that there like, is like, like it's not and, and and it's like it's like fucked up <laughs> mentally people. as as it turns out there's a community for everything and it's fucked up yeah there's a community yeah, for everything it's pretty trash yeah, yeah. so you know you're so right. Really what can is. you do? What can you do? Yeah. Stay, you know? in your, stay in your lane. Yeah. You know, like there's a community for everything and whether that's terrible or not, you know what I mean? Like it's it, you, you, as it turns out, cannot police the internet. It's impossible. As it turns out. And Bro, that, you can't even, you can't even police ball Python communities. Nope. Like yeah. they're all fucking weenies. They're all fucking there. They, you know they, they none of them will pull up. And realistically, like holistically, thank God, right? You know, we don't need control, right? It needs to just do what it's going to do. But yeah, dude, the worst day of my week is feeding day. And it's simultaneously one of the best days of my week. Because, dude, I can't stand that these animals eat rats. And they are primarily alive because these ball pythons are so picky. <laughs> you know, like I don't split hairs when I feed a frozen thought. Yeah. <laughs> but, dude, see, like, dude. Rats are that. yeah, it's rats it's are good. so cute, dude. Yeah, I mean, especially when they're in your possession for a few days. Yep, dude. They know, they know what's up. They know when there's water coming. They know yes. when there's coming. Yes. That's why I got out of the rat breeding game. It, it was yeah, so dude. sad. So tough, especially dude. Especially the pups. Uh, I get these Dumbo looking ones. And I'm oh like, my god. And I'm like, dude, I, I I'm gonna keep you forever. And uh, as you know, I'm like I have to feed you now. Yeah. And dude, man, what's crazy is like. Man, as much as we love these rats, bro, I've had a rat turn on me. <laughs> and oh. I'm like, you son of a bitch! Rats, <laughs> dude. You know why though? Because rats are like survivors, dude. They know. They know. Oh, oh what to you die? gonna do? Fuck yeah, you, yeah, motherfucker! Yeah, yeah, dude. Like I remember having, oh. like, I literally remember having the cutest rat, and and it knew it was about to get fed. Yeah. And like the snake didn't want to eat, so the next time around, it was like, fuck you, fuck you. I know what you're trying to do, motherfucker. Like I know what you're doing. You're a sick son of a bitch. Yes, dude. It's terrifying. I Sad. hate it. So the fact that people like use that to try and get views, I think is the it's lowest sick. form sick. of views you can possibly get. Yeah, and that is one thing. Pathetic, bro. Dude, Brian Barcheck, 
for all the shit that dude gets for trying to chase views and do shit. He has never posted a live feeding. No, he, I mean, his entire he, career. He jeopardized himself during his videos of getting bit. Like it was about which he understands now. Like the stressing part was it? Like he wasn't trying to do that, but absolutely he right. He was a fucking godfather of this shit. Right. Like he was. Nobody else right. was doing this shit. Right. Not yeah. even Steve Irwin. Like he it was for him. sure. For sure. So, but 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 let, now look at now look at him. Like right. He doesn't he doesn't get bit on purpose. No. He yeah. Yeah. Any of that? Very different. Yeah. It's very different, but it's also still like. You know, some people look at it like, why are you doing that? Like, right. why are you taking a fucking three-legged alligator to Petco? Well, it's like, <laughs> because it's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. you think Brian's going to let anybody get fucking hurt? Like, Brian's like, yeah, it is kind of like, wow, yeah, that's dude. bizarre. But Brian has a fucking game plan. Right. He's not going to let nobody get hurt by RJ at the fucking Petco. You right. know what I mean? Right. But, dude, like, that's why Brian is the pro at Brian, excuse me, Brian is the pro at writing that line in my eyes and not falling off. Right. Like he, like, yeah, some of stuff's like, whoa, like, bro, did you just do that? But yeah. it's like, nobody got hurt. We're good. Hey, you know dude, I mean? social, like I just said, social media is very different than this, this ball game, dude. It's social media is very different. And, you know, it's a different industry. So it's hard because they interlap, right? Like right. the industries, they intersect. And people that are hardcore breeders don't like, stuff that some youtubers do <laughs> is kind of how it works but at the same time those very youtubers are bringing new people into the industry so it's this you know double-edged pet but, coast but how are they bringing them in are they right. bringing them in in a fucking freaked out way like oh my god look at this fucking weirdo like listen there's people out there that like seeing death dude okay like, there's people out like bro i used to like i mean i don't like this as much anymore but like i remember like like seeing people get their ass beat yeah, dude. That's well, fucked up. You know. Now I see it. Like I'm like I'm grown now. Yeah, that makes it, my stomach it's, hurt. It's hurt. It hurt. Yeah. It hurts me. And so like it's because you've been beat up. I've been it beat feels up. like and I shit. Be, and I beat up. Right. You know That's what I mean. mean. I just don't like it's it. the worst. Right. But it's yeah. also like like okay, we know this. We know the circle of life. We know the rat eats. You know the snake eats the rat. Yeah, you know. Why do we have to right. heal? But you know what's fucked up is that these motherfuckers are commentary. Like they're they're like, listen to the squealing. Listen. To, oh my god, you see the eyeballs? Like it's yeah. fucking disgusting, bro. Yeah, dude. So like you're narrating the shit. I this is this is like you know to go back on something we were talking about of, as far as like legislation goes. Right. Um, this might be what I'm about to say might come off like I don't know maybe I'm a dickhead, but uh, I feel like we share a lot of responsibility in how we present ourselves as the snake industry because a lot of this legislation is directly based on negative stuff. Like the average person sees that rat, that cute little rat, just getting slaughtered right. on TV. That is not good. Dude, if you type in reticulated python into YouTube's you search, the first thing you see is probably somebody video. you know right. getting struck at by a snake on eggs. Right. You know what I mean? That is not the, the image. That's the most like get the fuck away from right. the type of shit you want to It's see. cool for us. Like people that are into the industry, right? right? Like that's crazy. That retic's wild, right? We know they're not all wild. We right. know that retic situationally was wild because it was protecting its eggs and it was manipulated to get a reaction, to get a view. And that kind of stuff to the average legislator is not positive. I just hate the fact <laughs> does that not help. Prehistoric death is one of the first places that I got warned about by a lot of people. And right. I was like, nope, I don't give a fuck. He support like I remember, remember how I started my uh hey MJ, what's a what, what's a trap? Remember you did? <laughs> yes, dude. Right? I do. Yeah. So I asked Jay, will you will you do this for me? And he did it. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, he did it. Yeah. Right. Well, it, Jay is great. It, Jay is no, a person. Here's the thing. Dude. Jay as a person, let me explain something about that dude, guy I go, has I go been really through... hard, bro. Right. Listen, I go really hard about this guy. And, and God, it's this is a tough line because I've I've actually broke bread with this guy. I've eaten with him. He's yeah. a fucking good, like his stories, what he has to say. Oh my god, intriguing. What, what he's overcome in his life. Being an to, orphan, yeah. Being an orphan, dude. It's like watching dude, his dad die in front of him. Like I've heard my crazy word. fucked up stories about Jay, right. and it could only make me sympathize. But I don't give a fuck about any of that shit if I go and see how your animals are taken care of. All that shit just gets thrown out the window, and that's what happened to me. There, yeah. I found out. Yeah. I got all this respect for Jay. I got to meet him on a personal level, but I can't take the shit that I saw at his fucking store. Ever and it will never leave my mind. It right just thinking about it right now gets me worked up because yeah. I, dude, 
man, I go out of my way to make sure my animals don't ever have to push. They don't ever have to feel fucking like, and, and I'm still not yeah. perfect. Like, dude, here's the thing. These animals need attention. They These, do. Yeah, as yeah. much as you, as much as you motherfuckers think that you could take care of a snake and not see it for a week, you're fucked up. That's yeah. not right. You yeah. have to go check up on that snake every they, day, they, dude. dude. I'm they, there every they, day. They, I, yeah. Dude, you every know, day. But the thing is, a lot of these people who can't keep up to this are too overwhelmed. And that's the old school keeping. That's that's what I mean. Volume is not the answer anymore, I don't think. I don't Ooh. think I don't think volume is successful. Because the other problem too is like, dude, the, the problem is is like volume sells, right? right? Like, look how many animals Justin produces a year. That's a that's a lot. How many animals does Mike Wilbanks produce a year? That's a ton, dude. I he produces he produces a ton of animals, but he can sell them. You know, he can sell them. You want to talk about you? You maybe can't sell. I'll tell you the most highly respected person in my heart that's been in this game since the fucking eighties, bro. And I don't talk about this guy enough, and I should. And not only because he's one of my sponsors, but still, Mark Bailey, bro. Oh my you god! You want to talk right. about? You want to talk? You want to talk about somebody who's been so tapped into the hobby, but is literally spectating? Like Mark was the first guy to tell me, "Oh yeah, I know that guy." He's good, but you want to know why he's good? Because I've never done business with him. Like, he's smart. Right. Like, he knows that there's so many motherfuckers who made it in this game by fucking other people over. Right, So right. you choose not to work with those people. Right. You don't, don't, don't go at them. Just, cool. Yeah. Do, do your thing, yeah. right? But And the animals he produces. But what I'm saying is, like, those those people who took advantage of other people, they're 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 out now. Like people, they are, yeah, people, yeah. Like, those people that are taking advantage of others are getting caught up. They right? are, yeah. Right. Well, social media helps with that. Social media helps with that. Yeah, it does. I mean, I don't want to say know. FBI Facebook group, but goddamn, I guess. <laughs> right. Dude, weirdos. social media helps um, a little bit. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, anyone relevant into this game nowadays have always just dealt with the times because yeah. it's always going to be this, right? right? As it turns out, that's how life works. Right. Not just the ball python industry. Yeah, hey, Marcus Jane, too. Can, I, can we please oh. give? I mean, we're talking about America, motherfuckers. Let's, let's, but yeah, if we want to talk about Canada, yeah. you want to talk about the Canucks? <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about the Canucks? You want to talk about Marcus Jane, baby? You want to talk about what, a website a legend, bro. that could teach you more about how to breed a ball python? Marcus I don't Jane. name a name a better better like I get blog. I don't know what it would be called on his website, dude. How to breed a ball python? You don't know how to breed a ball python? Go read his website. If you if you just want to, I mean, to understand, like Levance, shout out to Levance, right? Oh, dude, Levance, big dog, Levance, big dog, like a big, big dog. dog, dude, like big motherfucker, dog. dude. If there ain't nothing over here for you, there ain't nothing over here for you. You feel me? <laughs> but when Levance has credit, when Levance has props to give to somebody, he will give it. And the story, if you guys want to hear how Mark Marcus, um, his name's not, Marcus, uh, my God, what's his last name? Jay, God damn it. No, no, no Jay's his Mandic. wife, dummy. It's, it's Mandic. Mandic. God Mandic. damn it. I, that's what that's not exactly what I'm not yelling at you, Matt. Okay. But that's exactly what I wasn't trying to do. Mark Mandic. Okay. Um he gave stepping stones to a guy like Levance. Like, yeah. I remember Levance went up to him at a show and he spent like a good couple hours talking to Levance. Yeah. And Levance took all he soaked it all in yeah and look at levance and man. now look at levance yeah and wesley can we can we can we stop yeah. mentioning levance without wesley that's fair because wesley that's fair is the fire in straight yeah he's the innovator right i'm telling you right now yeah yeah levance i like that is a straight yeah 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 wesley the fire, fire. Yeah, yeah i appreciate that that's good I'm telling you man yeah but like i we want to appreciate somebody who's strongly spoken about his feelings still giving the time of day and credit credit to somebody who put him on and yeah that's what i took back from levance's first episode is mark mandek being mark mandek yeah and mark is somebody who will talk to you man like if he oh he's a legend dude he's a fucking yeah he's, he's a, a legend, legend man. within the whole country of Can like the whole, dude i can't tell you not one person i brought on from canada who has not given mark mandek props yeah dude what's crazy i think he's like the original investor in orange dream <laughs> you know Holy like shit. that's God. That's insane. You know, I think he was one of the first people to get it from Ozzy, you know, believe in Ozzy, basically, you know, and who was Ozzy probably at the time, you know, it's, it's, he's, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing, yeah. which is, you know, more than probably even I can say. <laughs>
That's why I, I feel like Canada, man. Canada's fucking I like they're they're getting a point where there's gonna be some serious stupid noise coming from Canada. Bro. Oh yeah, like, man. And I, there already is. I, I buy I buy some snakes from Canada. But you have frequently. you have uh is it Nicole Lyons? Nicole Lyons, okay. You have um Jaffe. Antoine? Antoine. D that's DP, what I got. Dude, Antoine from DPR. That's, that's who I got the bongo from. Ballistic. You got ballistic. The homie Jules. Oh, ballistic, dude. Okay. And then should we even say what rhymes with what rhymes with, what rhymes, what rhymes with Bill Toros? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Mill? But dude, okay. My favorite Canadian duo of all time. And they weren't really a duo, but in my eyes, there were. Fucking Khalil and Will, man. Dude, yeah. The Hart Foundation right there. Yeah. I call fucking Will Brett the Hitman Hart and Khalil's Owen Hart, bro. They're literally the Hart Foundation. Dude, big fan. Big fan of them, too. Yeah. I fuck with Canada so tight, man. How fun did we how much fun did we have in Canada, uh, uh, Matt? The Canadians are super nice. They are really nice. Yeah. As that, it turns out. That poutine, though. Poutine. Oh, I thought poutine. I was poutine. Poutine, <laughs> poutine, dude. Poutine. Poutine. It's poutine. It's poutine. <laughs> Dude, how come I fucked that up the entire time? I don't, I don't Dude, it just makes sense. It poutine? just makes sense. It fucking feels like poutine. <laughs> it was good. I missed it. Yeah. Dude, never had it, man. Never it's had it. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Bro. Dude, I, I hear. Drip, like, I'm like, so we had that shit for breakfast, yeah. bro. They Dude, don't they have like ketchup, ketchup chips? So can, you, can you block this right, fucking right. sexual right, private right. shit, please? Right, right. <laughs> New dude, did you start your OnlyFans? No, I should. Oh, okay. My I, wife won't approve it though. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because that means she has to get involved, and I'm not cool with that. Right, that's fair. I'll yeah. show my hairy ass. <laughs> dude, she could just show feet. She could just do a feet thing. You know, I had I had a Patreon member request. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not joking. I, I, I had somebody request mine and hers underwear. My Patreon member. Did you send him? No. Okay. Not, okay. He wasn't on that tier. So <laughs> there's yeah, tier. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was ten dollars a month. Yeah. Like you got that's a hundred dollars at least for no. three months. Remember how weird that was? Though? It's only he followed me and I was like, dude. It's only weird if you make it. You know, like it's only weird if you make it. Weird. <laughs> that I was me, by nice, the way. What if I gave him a fresh pair out of Tinley after a rough night? Oh, <laughs> dude, that's disgusting. <laughs> that's disgusting. That's actually. The only regret I have from last year is I wasn't at Tinley, you know, because <laughs> I want those underwear. Oh, man, Tinley. What a show. What a show that is. Dude, that's where I met Nick for the first time. At a Tinley? At a Tinley. He was my roommate. What? What? Miguel brought him. I was, oh, because oh, – oh, oh, Miguel oh, brought Nick. You had the house. I had the house, yeah. Miguel oh, shows up. Nick comes in. I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? He's Big like, hey. Six, three, five, yeah, dude. Goddamn – Neanderthal? Little gremlin shows up. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He had his son with him? No, him. Oh. I was calling him a gremlin. You called him a gremlin? No, yeah. So he's a fucking giant. Bro. He, not little. He is not Miguel's a little. Miguel's a gremlin. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, like, gremlin. yeah, Nick is not little. That's for Nick's sure. A beast. Yeah. You know what's crazy is like Nick actually has like, dude, Nick's from a rough part of Cali, bro. Yes. <laughs> so like, you know, but the thing is like, Nick's so nice. Like he's such a like he's so more mature than I am. Like he's like was able to like turn the leaf yeah. quicker than I was. But I remember hanging out with Nick, and like he like he knows how fucking ready I am, right? Yeah, yeah. And and, and Nick is just like like people should realize how great of a teddy bear he is. Like oh, he doesn't have to great. be. Nick could be a beast if he wants to. Yeah, like, he's such a sweet fucking guy, bro. That's what makes him I great, though. Nick. You know what I mean? Like there's that controlled chaos that makes him great. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. a, he's a he's a good guy. He has great snakes. Too, what so. about what's this thing about the last time we were at Pomona, me, you, and him, and we were smoking at the parking lot? Remember how high we got? Yeah, the, the security came. The rooftop. Yeah, the rooftop. The rooftop. Yeah, right. Is Anaheim? Oh my god! It's Anaheim. Was it Anaheim? Anaheim. Yeah. One of the best. That was right after Forest died. Yeah, dude. That was, uh, it was an emotional time. That was a really good time, though. Really I will was. say. I, I will say that. it was a celebration of life. Yeah, is what I call it. Man, yeah, I, I have shit. a picture of all of us in uh, the elevator, and oh, your buddy, right. your buddy with the uh, Condros. Oh, SJ, uh, Ian. Yeah, yeah, dude. All of us. Yeah, that was a good time. That was a good time, man. Shout out to Ian Bessel, even though we have some words earlier this year. I love him. It's all hey, good. I got dude. It is what it is. Such well, is life, right? Life is just fucking too short, man. And, it uh, is. That's why I like you know one thing about me, and you know this, Joel. Like Joel, you you like you've never. I mean, I've been drama, but you have not been any. Like, you're such a just a, 
like you're Joel. Like it's Joel. Like it's, I just try to chill, man. You got the hand up. <laughs> yeah, dude. And it's great. You know what I mean? But I just like snakes. Say anything bad about Joel? Nobody, <laughs> but you can't say nothing bad about Joel. Like, what can you say bad about Joel? Dude, yeah, I just, I just, I like breeding snakes. I think they're cool. That's it. Yeah, he man. Has his hand up. Yeah, you know dude. What I mean? And also, I like partying at shows, man. So dude, it's fun. This, say, this motherfucker will get ripped. <laughs> I'm ready, man. Joel, yeah, you, yeah, you do. You, you'll, you'll, you'll take it to the limit. I like to, yeah, I like to have fun, man. I'm a big advocate of fun. Also, like, you know, advocate of not knowing what's gonna happen next, right? So, so. check this out. Were you? I, I feel. Especially because you you were growing you were raised in a small town, yep, smaller yep. population. Would you be an advocate as meeting so many people if it wasn't for the snake game? Like I, I feel like we're in a position where meeting people is like it's so easy. It's like yeah, yeah. It's because like we have so much to talk about. Right, right, and, right. And, and and maybe with motocross you had that, but like let's just say today, like let's say now you don't have motocross, like right. as far as the way you did. <laughs> yeah. So let's body won't hold that. Let's bro. take away the fucking reptile game. How would right. your social life be right now? Um, right? I don't know. I don't know if it would. I, I don't know. I like people, man. I like meet people. I like stories. You're in the mountains, Joel. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I know. I like the people. population said 86 when we came up here. <laughs> I like I like people when I'm ready to like people, right? So like, I don't want people around my house, but yeah. when I like go out, dude, yeah, I like meet people, dude. I, you know, dude, yeah, I'm pretty social. I love it. I love meeting people. I love hearing people's stories, dude. It's so intriguing because. Just like ball pythons, I can't breed every snake. I also can't live every life. Right. And so it's cool to hear people's stories, you know? But like I said, you have a reason they want to hear someone's stories. Like, like, like I you, do. Have, you have an opportunity to hear people. I do, dude. And it's like me, like, God damn it. Like I, man, I've, I've never been in a position where I care so much about where you came from. Yeah, dude, I'd like love now it. Now I'm all I like, dude, it. I want to know what's your fucking story, bro. Like, and it's not because of a podcast, it's because it builds character. Like it yeah. makes me like appreciate who you are that's what i mean dude i love it i love it because everybody has something you know everybody has but like how do you how do you something. get respect like that by not going to a show like how do you how do you expect to kind of like joel i would never respect you the way i do just based off your instagram following right we would right. have been this cool no way yeah no, no way, way right right yeah dude it's it's a trip shows are i've said it my whole life uh my whole life of being in the reptile industry, dude, shows are so important. They are super important. And like I said, dude, it's it's the, in my opinion, the one arena I've been lacking in the past, really since COVID started. Past like two years, I've been, I just haven't been around. But, you know, I've been doing other stuff, you know. It's been busy and hectic. But this year, dude, this next coming year, stars have aligned, man. Things are, things are slowing down. I can do things I want to do again, so. Let's see how align these stars are for you joel and what i mean by that is god damn sounds every everything sounds great how you're saying and sometimes people get the same vibe off me and then they ask me how's your marriage life right right and, and, and honestly that's a, man depending who the person is that could be a rough question you Get ask it. me i'm blessed i'm like dude, oh dude my wife fucking dude. She knows everything yeah dude um, i am so fortunate that so wanna, that my wife knows that i'm a degenerate like she i am so <laughs> fortunate dude i'm so fucking i am very fortunate that she is aware of who i am as like a person you know um yeah dude uh you know maybe i'm ignorant but i think we're doing so pretty good. Uh, what i'm trying to get is how much is your wife tapped into what you have going on with the snakes like how much is she involved with the, the money that each snake costs when you make it yeah you sell it like all that shit. It, I mean, is this just a private thing for you or is she tapped in as far as the business side goes of it? I would say she she's not tapped in as far as like um, the business side goes of it. She has her whole life to live. You know what I mean? Like right. uh, she works long hours all day, all the time. Right. Um, but she's extremely tapped into what do you think of this snake? I use uh, Kiersey as like my this is I got this from JD, John you know john dude. okay you want to talk about why i love troy so much john john yeah jd constrictor what a duo bro what a duo time, dude i was really like good good friends with troy and i ran into him a show he was fucking right next to jd yeah and I, I i knew john just by going by his table <laughs> how could you not know john right right, right. right. but like i knew john knew john after right. having troy next to him and right bro, the rest is history yeah shout dude. to fuck hey shout out to the iowa boys dude that's yeah. what i gotta say the iowa boys he hit me with the lithmus test so like chemistry you dab the 
tab inside the chemical compound, it would change the color of the paper to different things depending on what was in it, right? So yeah. it would definitely tell you what it is. And so the analogy is that, hey, look at this snake to somebody that doesn't look at snakes all day. Right. And tell me if this looks like a different snake than a normal. And if it does, I like it. You know what I mean? And Kirsty is great for that because she doesn't stare at snakes all day. And she's she can look at a snake and say, yeah, that is unique. Or that gene is different. And that's how involved, that's how she's involved. She right. helps me with the decisions on what to actually spend my money on, basically. Right. And that's perfect because ultimately my goal is to breed pretty snakes. Right. That's all I want. I what just want is, pretty snakes. What's the goal as far as you doing snakes full time, period? Like, is that even a goal to you? Like, do you feel like you never want to have that kind of burden on you? Yeah, multi, yeah, two sided, I guess. Yeah, I would love to just do this. This is awesome. If you could, yeah, 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 I would love this. So, is there, I don't know if I want it though, is my problem. Uh, I don't know if I want the, um, dude, once you start getting into like relying on these animals to produce for you, well, it gets heavier, it's heavier because look what Justin's doing, like innovate. It's like, like you can't just sit back and breed animals. Absolutely you, you not. You can't. Absolutely and not. And that's what's scary. Like, like yeah. bro, like I couldn't believe I convinced my wife I could just not go back to work based off animal sales at that time. Right. And that is not I'm sorry, babe, I conned you. Um, I'm so sorry I did that. Well, it was a golden but, time. But it but it worked, okay. It worked. And, and but but I also went into the next year, like, dude, you can't do this next year, bro. Like, like, like you understand that. Yeah, you are making money in the snakes, okay? Yeah, dude. But understand that this shit yeah. cannot happen next year. And I feel like that maybe something else. You maybe is the message. Else. Like snakes do make money, right? Like holy hell, do they make money? But the, so does other things. The other things make money too, and and it makes money with less stress. I guess is my point. You know what I mean? Right. Like, dude, we sold. You know, we we sold an animal recently. We sold the Mojave puzzle is almost four thousand dollars. You know, we sold that. We got the hats originally from Will forever ago for a thousand dollars. It was three times the profit. You know, they've bred three years in a row. Like the cost of the snake is negligible at this point. Right. Like it, the cost of the snake, I've forgotten about. Right, first We've clutch. Had, first clutch, I forgot right. about Go it. On. Yeah. The problem is, you know, when you only have sixty snakes, you only have twenty clutches max. Right. You know. So what's so, relevant out of that twenty? Right. And so that's not going to supply your whole year. Right. And that's why other options, different investments, different ways to make money, innovations, like, w I don't know. This would be my call out to Freedom Reader right now. Make a tub with windows on it. Like, why is the ADW the only one? Windows, dude. I want to see my snakes. I want to see my snakes. But how, what, what are you really looking at through that small window? Dude, that's your problem. You don't know because you don't have windows. Oh shit! That was very player. Yeah. That was very player right yeah. there. You don't know. I don't right? know, motherfucker. You got windows. <laughs> you can see, or you can, you, see, you can see body movement. I know when my snakes are hungry. They're at the front of the tub. Oh my God, I don't have to. I don't have to open the tub, dude. I can just look in here and I'm like, okay, this snake's hungry. This snake's hungry. This snake's hungry. I don't have to open tubs. I see my snakes. Window tubs are like nighttime. Nighttime, dude. Ball pythons are active nighttime. That's usually when I'm in there right. doing all my crap. They're all moving around. Talk about not getting snagged either. Like talk about not getting. You know where the snakes at, Jesse? I need fucking windows on all my tubs. Yeah, and you know what Jesse told me? I wanted them on the 40s. He's like, dude, if you pay for the jig, I'll do it. No, I'm not gonna pay for the jig because then you're gonna use the jig for everyone else. <laughs> How much does the jig cost? I don't know. It wasn't that much, but I was just being a dick. <laughs> I'll pay for the jig. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah, because I want I want windows on the 40s. The 40s are a good size tub for most ball pythons. Damn, but I have all the 80s. I have all the 80s because I want the damn windows. Because I want to see this seven thousand dollar snake. I don't want to see a room full of shelves. That's stupid. I hate it. Maybe the snake wants to see a little bit of light too. Like, maybe the snake wants to see the world. Bit, like, like, just is, is the LED light on or not? Okay, cool. Like, right, like, dude. It's not. Light. It's and and they eat. I have an in, I have two racks of them. The snakes eat. Like no. the ball pythons aren't afraid of the window. Like they no. eat. Yeah. You know, like, and it's sick to be able to see them, man. I, and I think that's the next stage, dude. Like, let's innovate these tubs. Why aren't these tubs better? 
aren't the tubs better for ball pythons? There's room there. There's room there to make the tubs better. You know, there is. We could we could add windows. You could see the snakes. We could add hides, built-in hides. I know they've dabbled with that kind of stuff. But, you know, because I know ball pythons like tight, small, dark area, right, to be comfortable. Well, but I they mean, also come out. They do move, I have, contrary to belief. I had the privilege of running another podcast that's not really primarily like ball python, like, uh -huh. you know, forced as far as like that's the main topic. Yeah. But I also have somebody who's a co-host who's like one of the highly respected ball python keepers. That absolutely. Dave Levinson. Right? Yes, Shout absolutely. Levinson. Yeah. But we had Stephen Cush and Ryan McVeigh. Shout out to those two. We had them on the show last night. And, you know, God bless Ryan. Like, Ryan is coming up with, like, innovative, like, talking about, like, you know, UBV bulbs and shit like that. Yeah. They had an argument that kind of made me feel some type of way. Let's let's hear it. The argument was that why ball pythons are always having to be in a darker, confined place. Well, guess what, Ryan? Based off my experience, you want a fucking baby ball python to grow and take off. You keep it in a small, a confined space. Safe. You don't. You put a small ball python in a four by two. It's difficult. It's gone. You're not. That snake's never gonna eat. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what yep. you say. Yeah, dude. Okay. I agree. You put an adult four. You put an adult ball python in a four by two. That's okay. That's fine. That's a preference. Right. Right. But you don't like. Here's the thing. A ball python is put on this earth to fear its life. A ball python. <laughs> it does. It I, seems that way. I've already it fucking said this. Ball pythons want no human interaction. I don't give a fuck what any juba tuba tuba poop to pet tuber has to say. They don't want to fuck with you. They want to be left alone. Okay. hundred percent. I want to be left alone. Thank God bless. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I want to be left alone. Right. So yeah. you know, anybody who pays attention to like like goddamn, think about a kid, like you know, certain people know how to make their kid happy. Right, right, right. Fair okay, enough. That makes your kid happy. You know how to make our snakes happy. Yes. Well, yeah. What happens? Like, you know, here's the thing. It's an argument because ball pythons could go through some really fucked up conditions. Oh, they could they... be miserable and not fuck themselves up. They're reptiles. You do that bro. to a retic, you give a retic a too hot of a spot, his face is gone. They'll push. A retic will push so hard Dude. that their fucking face is gone. Dude, yeah. You know when a retic's uncomfortable. They'll give you signs. I think any yeah. living thing will give you a sign it will. when it's not happy. It will. Yeah, okay? yeah. And what is a sign for a snake if it's not eating? I'm pretty sure it's stressed out. Yeah, there's there's something uncomfortable. And how many snakes are not eating in a confined, dark area? Right, right. That's the go-to. Right. You know how many fucking pet? And God, I love all my customers who are pet people, and they don't want to breed. But whenever they tell me, MJ, my snake won't eat. Well, you know what? Put this shit in a shoebox. I, yeah. I tell them, go to Target. Go get a fucking Sterilite tub right now. Yeah. Keep your room or get it. I'll, I'll make sure the heat's right. I'll like, put them in there. Okay, mm -hmm. and then get wait a few days and feed them and watch yes. what happens. Yeah, it's dude, it's way different. It's it's difficult because there is a huge wave. Uh, Khalil of, does not bathe his ball pythons. He's lying. Yeah, I soak. I soak bad sheds. Bad sheds. Khalil doesn't even soak his hair. He conditions every month. And that's it. Because that's how you do your hair. You know what though? Like, look at his hair. It's perfect. Yeah, I, CEO. Like, yeah, I dude. I don't like, run things. just my boy. The thing you know with ball pythons is. Is like there's like this huge like movement right now to hate on tubs, right? So that's tough because ball pythons actually do thrive in tubs. Right. I think they could do better. Is all I'm saying. I guess on tubs, I, I think tubs could be better designed for the ball python to a point where ball pythons don't have these feeding strikes, maybe. Well, guess what Justin does when he has feeding strikes? What's up? He puts it in a smaller tub. And, I, one, and once it eats, I do the exact same thing. Once he eats, he puts it right back. I do the exact same thing. So I just have an option for it. Exactly. I do. Uh, that's why I don't know if you noticed the. I have a forty rack, and then I have the smaller. Uh, I forget what they are. They're like, they're like twenty quarts, mm -hmm. you know. And my grow ups from the ten quart or the six quart long things go into the half of what I think a 40 is. And then I transition those snakes into the 40. So they're always like age appropriate tub for them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that is a good way to do it. Um, I know that you know, I've had a couple of snakes that like come out of that, like hatchling the, not like the skinny narrow one. I forget what they're called. Um, 
Oh yeah, there's a weird number for them. Fifty. Yeah, I don't yeah. Like those, bro. I yeah. Don't like the skinny, the skinny dude, long one. They, they gotta lay flat. Like they gotta yeah. lay like sideways too. Yeah. So like those. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the, like the double one. That's okay. like two width. Oh, the two, the two width ones. Okay. Yeah. Um, I take those. We'll, have those. we'll have those. Yeah, they're like I think my favorite hatchling tub. They're so sick. Yeah, and I take those and I put them to the new tub, and then they won't eat in there. I'll put them back, and they'll eat right. So there is that. Like some ball, dude. The, the problem is, is there's not a right answer. There's well, not a right answer. Like each snake is an individual. Take care of your snake. If it's eating or not eating, maybe try something different. What do you What do you think of this? I had someone on the show recently, um, and God bless him, but, you know, he has practices that he's sticking to. He'll, he only okay. offers wrap pups from the beginning. Right. And, and if they don't take the wrap pup, right then and there, he force feeds it. Yeah, dude, that's impressive. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think that's exceptional. That's, like, extreme. That's, like, an extreme end of it. I... I, He's so <laughs> that's like you know that's so great i love that was such a like what it was respectable answer <laughs> you oh know my God. i don't know yeah that's like that's i probably wouldn't do that i don't do that um uh, but i'm not saying it doesn't work dude there's a thousand ways to skin the cat right <laughs> like i'm sure his animals are alive so who gives a shit right <laughs> so you know i don't know i i do everything i can to not assist speed but I mean, like, I hate dude, it. no matter what, I mean, if, dude, he's trying to figure shit out. Like, God bless that person for trying to fucking, like, figure out how to get the animals to grow. There are a lot of people that will not let their hatchling ball python not eat past, like, two weeks. Right. And I will. Right. I, I, will. I, will, I will let that animal go basically until I'm like, all right, well, you might die. Right. So here's our decision. You either get assessed fed or you die. I come, you know, and this is why I do respect the conjure world conjure world that i'm from mm -hmm. i don't want to say all of them are like this because you know my boy socrates is like he'll fucking assist feed something for a full year like he's that extreme right for sure right but then, but then ryan young won't sit like he, first first and foremost ryan young doesn't feed anything for the first time till after like two months after it's born right he waits right which if you think about it how many things are fed that quick out of the egg in the wild not many not many right yeah, so that's kind of like on your that's on your side if you like kind of get the snake hungry right yes away, right right but there's also like the whole side of like if a snake isn't meant to be on this earth right yeah like, dude like, some like, snakes like, don't thrive like check this out like i i mean goddamn the chondro game man you want to know one thing i've been fucking checked about hard enough is the chondro game i uh i've had chondros i actually finally got successful to breed i got him to eat and what prolapse what the fuck? <laughs> Nobody told me about this. What? Actually, Marshall yeah. Mendes did. Yeah, actually, you know, I take it back. I take this back. I told three people about my condos eating right off right off the bat. Bill Stegel, Gary Shavino, Marshall Mendes. Right. Bill Stegel, way to go, bud. Super happy for you. Gary Shavino, MJ. I'm so proud you got this, man. Then Marshall. <laughs> That's cool. Prolapse is next. And guess what the fuck happened? to all three of them yeah dude prolapse, you know okay? what i mean dude there's some things but that there's some things that aren't meant to be here yeah dude you know some things are put into this universe and that's the way things turn out <laughs> but i mean even saying like even a weak eater like something that doesn't yeah. want to come on this earth and eat yeah i'm pretty sure the rest of the babies are going to be like that like that that might be that and might be something I, that trickles down i i agree oh i agree to that yeah i think you know my experience is limited i have ball pythons retakes always eat that bow constrictor in there they she's never missed a meal in her life obviously you know <laughs> never missed she's a, in a good place yeah she's doing she's thriving right. she is thriving she's mean nobody touches her she eats right. um ball pythons yeah i think there's stronger genetics towards eating and up i think it's almost genetically related to some snakes uh i also think it's pattern i think ball pythons can be trained to eat uh on a schedule and I think that if you're extremely diligent in the first few weeks of a ball python's life, you can develop a good feeder. Right. Um, so I, you know, I don't know, but like you said, dude, some, some snakes don't eat. In your eyes, what's been the best feeding regimen for your hatchlings? Like what's something that you stick to that's been working for you? And what I mean by that first, anywhere from the first meal to the next size meal to how often? Um, ideal world. Rat breeder has everything I need. Right. 
Uh, I start with mice. A hopper? Yeah. I start, I do, I do the first meal on a mouse. Right. And then I will try the next one on a rat. Um, if that doesn't work, I'll do another mouse. And then I, I start Eventually on mice. They switch. Eventually they switch. They yeah. always switch. It's I've like, never had a like clockwork. I've switch. never had a snake not switch. Yeah. Uh, and the mouse is better in the beginning because it's a hopper. Pinky, yeah. pinky rat. Just, just like it's, it's is squeals. It's yeah. gross. Yeah, dude. It doesn't need to be eaten. Yeah. Really, by a ball python. It needs in to my be opinion. Hunted. It needs. Yeah, yeah. Like when the rat can start moving around, that's when you switch to rats. Right. And that's been my my most successful things so far. Uh, starting with mice, transitioning to rats, and then they just slam rats. And then what, what's the size preference for you? Because, you know, some people dabble in mediums. I've even heard some big pythons, ball pythons taking larges and shit. What, what, what's your, what's your, you know, when it comes to, my question for you, Joel, is like your, your bigger female ball yeah. pythons, even your males during breeding season and whatnot, after breeding season, how are you feeding them? Is it all the way through the same? Do you fluctuate it? How's that happening as far as size goes with their meals? I usually just feed small rats. Primarily. Right. Um, sometimes I get a couple of mediums for a couple of bigger girls. Uh, two or three different times I've fed a large rat. I have like three ball pythons that are like pretty beefy. They're, they're pretty old. They're like, you know, four, you know, five, 6,000 grams. They're, they're big. They can handle large rats. Um, I don't feed them though. Um, so, you know, I just, I feed smalls. I feed cost effective. Smalls are cost effective. Um, and for the most part, if you're feeding enough, like, you know, feed every five days kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not every seven days. Um, they do pretty good. They do pretty good on, you know, small, small mediums, stuff like that. Some, like I said, some of the big girls, my general rat order is like 25 smalls and five mediums. Yeah. And whoever I feel like needs the medium, I feed it to them. You know, right. I have, I have some females. I'm like, yeah, you're for sure breeding this year. You know, you can take a medium, you know, stuff like that, where it's like, this snake is so eager to eat. I know it's hungry. Maybe they get the medium that week and everybody else just gets the smalls. And you know, I just kind of rotate that. Um, and, and that comes down to just knowing your animal. Like, yeah, like, dude, I'm in there every day. Like, right. Like just because, and it comes down to the windows because I can see the snake as it turns out. No, I'm the, kidding. No, no. The window thing is starting to hit me harder and harder. Yeah, dude, it's pretty, it's legit, man. I maybe, can see. Maybe because I just put an order in another fucking feeder breeder record. I didn't ask for Windows. Yeah, dude, see? Man. Well, that's because yeah. they really don't offer it, okay? That's their problem, all right? I'll, I'll pay for the jig. <laughs> yeah, dude. Get some Windows on those 40s. Jesse that's was, like, mad at me. Okay, so we've already been doing two and a half hours? Really? Yeah. God damn. Dude, time flies when you're having fun, man. Well, listen, let's, let's get to a wrap-up wrap up question before we get yep. some hot seat questions. Let's do it. Uh, this is a little juicy one because, you know, obviously we were talking about Brian Barczyk, how much I respect Brian Barczyk. Um, you know, he's been around the game. I mean, come on, Brian Barczyk, right? Um, Brian Barczyk is not tapped in as much as he was into the ball python game. He has sick shit, don't get me wrong. But goddamn, look at him. He's moving. He's grooving. He's, Dude. he's YouTuber, right? But he's going to sit here and still spit facts. And something he said in person – uh, two episodes ago, not the last one with Gary Shavino and all those legends. It was the one before that. He said that not enough people are considering what to do with their profit throughout the year of breeding snakes and that at least 40% of your profit should be going to another investment. Mm -hmm. How much of that you think is important? How much of that do you feel like is in, is actually relevant to what Brian's saying to longevity in this game? Like other investments outside of with no, snakes. Not putting in snakes. Yeah, nothing, not... Not the reptiles. Yeah, dude. I think that that varies on your goal. You know, like that, that is going to depend on what you really want to do. Uh, if you want some financial freedom for your life, whatever that may be, it is a wise investment to use snake money to do other things. That's how I feel. Yeah. Uh, snakes have paid for things that I wouldn't be able to afford otherwise. Period. Period wedding ring one of them do you know Amen. what i mean you know what i mean like yeah. stuff like that yeah. our honeymoon one of them part of the wedding one of them you know like snakes pay for that stuff um those aren't investments 
That's maybe maybe you could argue. Maybe right. you could argue that's an investment. You know, choosing your mate is no big deal, <laughs> right? And like that happiness is crucial. Crucial, right? <laughs> so I mean, you know, there's the, that part of it. But I, I yeah, dude, I, I definitely think that these snakes should make you make money, for sure, and not all of it necessarily should be spent on snakes. But at the same time, there are crucial years where it all should be spent on snakes. <laughs> Would be my answer for the first three or four years, dude. Every dime I earned spent on snakes, every bit of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like everything. And then some, I was putting way more money than we were making back into this. And I think that's what it takes a little bit. Yeah. You got to be in it, man. You got to be in it, you know? So yeah. You know, and I heard like Brian had this podcast, um, that he had, you know, the podcast that he runs. And I listened to that one time check, checking, in? checking in. Yeah. And he was talking about one of his buddies that was trying to buy a home and his friend was like well do you really need a home right now could you invest that money that he made on ball pythons into the stock market and he went ahead and invested it properly with this guy you know everybody's you know all your decisions are half luck right yeah, really all your decisions are half luck and as it turned out dude made him 20 times the amount the amount bought a house and cat, you know, that kind of stuff. Like the pay for it. the the legendary stories that you hear about with these snakes, right? Yeah. It is achievable and it is possible, but it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. Nothing in this life, as it turns out, is easy. Not even just living. Yeah. Like bums are having a tough time on this. You know, they're not doing anything and they're having a tough time. Like everybody's having a tough time. But 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 like Barchek has a tough time still. Like like Absolutely. I, I feel like you guys out there who are looking at other people who you might think not have tough times because how well their life is busy and how they're traveling. You don't fucking know anything. Like, like, like times always stay tough. Like, yeah. Like, like cause life shit happens. Okay. Oh, so what dude. money? So what fucking money comes your way? Well, guess what? Right. So do fucking, so do health issues. Oh boy. God do bless. They ever. Do you know they ever, mean? dude. Dude. Matthew, we're not talking about property taxes. We're talking about fucking leave, anal fistulas. Leave your property tax out of this. God talking about herniated discs. Yeah, we're talking about fucking back issues. Fucking Dude. goddamn 80-year-old issues. Shoulder reconstructions. Okay. Gee whiz. God bless Matthew Summers. But I'm just saying, like, like, dude, real life shit can hit you to where, like, the money don't matter. The like, money don't matter, right. It don't fucking matter. So, I... There you go. Oh. Is that your, is that your, your lady's pissed? She good? No, dude. My music started going. Was that the music? That oh was music. God, that dude, was, we're already a party. I, I was already. Sorry. That was awesome. Stim cell, stim cell therapy, for sure. Snake money pays for it. That's what I mean, dude. Invest. Invest. Invest your money. Right. Like, dude, we're all here to make a living. Like, this is what we want. Like, we all want to exist and exist but well. Especially reptile people. Like, we're all here for the same mission. Like, we, we just are, dude. animals, man. We just, like, yeah, we love... Dude, we were talking about this earlier. If you're at a point where you think snakes are cool, you like animals so much. Yeah. More than the other person. <laughs> More than the other person, dude. Yeah. yeah, and I consistently have that argument with people because I'll say, yeah, you know, we we like we like breed snakes, you know, like it's kind of like a weird thing, blah, blah. And then they'll just be like, oh, I hate snakes. And then they're they're telling me how much they like animals and all this shit, you I know? Hate and snakes. I, yeah, hate and I'm snakes. like, yeah, then yeah. you don't like animals. Yeah, don't fucking sit you, here. You like certain you got a animals. You hairless cat. Like, right. No. You, you like certain animals. Yeah. You don't like all animals. So don't preach that. Don't. Joel, I'm better than you. Joel, right? yeah, period. Listen, reptile people are better than the rest. Yes, dude. I could agree. When you're at a point where you like snakes, man, you like you like animals too much. Matthew Summers just got a fucking chick because how much he loves reptiles. His chick was naturally drawn to him because of his Doc Martin boots, his <laughs> concert ability abilities, and because he's a Patreon member of Trap Talk. That's all I gotta say. It's, it's a three for. It's a three. It's a home run. <laughs> yeah, it's a home run for sure. <laughs> oh my god! Listen. Joel, this has been an iconic episode. Um, yeah, bro, shit. Two hours sure. and what? Where are we at right now? Two forty-five. God and damn. Sitting at seventy-five for a long ass time. There we go. There we go. Hey, listen, guys. I appreciate all the views from my man right here. Thank you. you. you I, I mean, come on now. Here I you am. guys came for a reason. Why don't you guys get the likes up for my boy Joy? Joy. Joel. There's a lot me. of joy here. There's a lot of fourteen hands going. On. Fourteen hands, bro. <laughs> 14 hands. I'm not gonna man. lie, the second bottle of wine is hitting me. But listen, we got hot seat questions for you, bro. Oh, not, damn. We're dude. not letting you out. I thought yet. we were done, dude. Okay. 
78, 78 oh, dude. 78 out of 77? God dude, damn. that is solid, bro. That is solid. Wait, 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 wait. I hope I, I take this back. We're not doing hot seat questions yet. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. All right, hey, I gotta pee real bad. I'm gonna do it. Matt, are you jumping in? Jump in, Matt. Let's go. Where's my key? Where's my key? My key's right here. My key or my key? Oh, my key. My key. Matthew Summers, eight. What's up? My road dog right here. Give me a hug, my boy. How you living, man? How you liking it? How you? I'm loving. How do you let these people know how you like going all these fucking remote podcasts that we do, linking up with people who sell you your first snake? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like you are part of a goddamn legacy that we have going on right now. I love it, dude. I, I'm. I like. I joke about like wanting to be away from people and like, but not this people. Like not. Yeah. Well, exactly. It's, like, it's yeah, but it's like it, like my neighbor. Right. I want to be away from her. Well, I don't agree because I, I she's agree terrible. With that. Yeah, but. I love meeting people in our industry because it's fun. Right. And mostly, I haven't had a bad reaction yet from right. where we've gone. Everyone that we've gone to go see, like, I stayed at Marshall's house. I stay at Bill's house. Like, right. and they're all super welcoming. I was like, and I'm like, at that time, I, I didn't even have a clutch yet. Yeah. And, you know, they could have been like, who the hell is this kid that hasn't even bred snakes yet staying in my house? But they were like, super welcoming and kind. Yeah, but dude, Matt, you're not desperate for anything, dude. Like, there's one thing, Matt. Like, you, like, you are enjoying the ride that you're on. Oh, 100 percent. And you, you've been like that since I met you. I mean, I think ever since I met you, like, I think I met you what 20 was it 2019? It was before COVID, a uh, not concert, right? But it was like right before you actually started investing in the snakes, like right when you took things to another level. Yeah, as I I, t- I asked you, I was like, should I take my personal page and turn it into just a snake business page? And you were like, are you ever going to use it for personal shit? And I was like, no. But even though you have a, a and then I, then, and then I made one, and then I made one because so I was like, I kind of miss posting personal stuff. Yeah. But. but but the thing is, Matt, it's like as much as how much you've grown in the last three years, it's happened organically. Like like I feel like you're literally just enjoying shit, man. Oh yeah, and then I'm just taking in everything I learn from other people where we go. Yeah, like from your podcast and everyone we meet. Guys, you need to follow him on Instagram, Matthew MSR Reptiles, and you also need to go subscribe to his YouTube channel, Matt Summer Reptiles on YouTube. Go follow him on Morph Market because this motherfucker has heat. He's about to put some major heat on Morph Market. You're my dog, bro. I my appreciate dog. you so much. Cheap. All right. Cheap. <laughs> you got to prepare me for that, God damn it. All right. Hot seat questions. Wait, wait, no, no. Wait, wait. You got, had something. Got, you had something. Yeah, yeah. You had something. I had to I, cheer. I, Cheers I, real quick, dude. Have a good it's been a long time. Appreciate everybody that's still here, man. Dude. My wife's here. Thank you. My, my wife. Dude, John, Sean, dude. Appreciate you being in Sean this, dude. Bradley, the homie. Dude, this hey. one time, I don't even know if he remembers this. Me, Adam, John Feely, we interviewed that dude for five hours. Five hours? Dude, it was a, like a five-hour stream, bro. What the fuck? You want to talk about endurance? We went for it. All right? We went for it. So, okay. Look, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of motherfuckers are out there wondering, when is Unplugged going to come back? Man, dude. You know, I... Dude, that, that's what inspired me. Like, you understand that was the first podcast I, I ever... Podcast. First podcast I ever got invited to where... God, God bless Heather. Heather God bless good. Adam. You know, yeah. they, they were like, MJ, can you please not smoke and cuss? And I said, you know what? For you guys at will. <laughs> you did great. I did great. You, you know, did great. You know how hard it was? You did great. But, dude, that was like. Yeah, we're PG, dude. We're PG. But God bless you guys. Because, you, dude, I mean, kind of in that in that time, even, even Miguel's PG. Like, you got to keep it like. You know, kids love this shit. Oh, dude, so I you, I'm vanilla, dude. I vanilla. keep it. I keep you, it you vanilla. You keep it cordial. Yes, dude. I don't. Behind the scenes, I'll be a but dick. What I'm saying is, I, no. Here's the thing. I t- I took the behind the scenes in the scenes and was a dick. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You thrive in it. Dude, only that's, be, only that's what you're nobody else at. was. Nobody, yes, you're good at. I was good at it, dude. Right? You you yeah, dude. But, but you, the, you're right. you guys birthed me that. Like, wow, that's weird. But you guys put that in my fucking yeah, head. I have the cesarean scar from it. To well, be because honest. guys, I listen. You guys. Dude, no disrespect, man, but you and Adam were creating a legit and still are fucking ball python following. I never really felt a part of this ball python community. So in my eyes, I said, well, guess what? You guys are being safe because you want to protect the ball python. People who watch you, I don't give a fuck. I want to attract the adults. I want to attract. No, I do care. I do care. But this, this, this doesn't have to be about the children all the time. Absolutely, you know yeah. Like, there's Dude, grown, there's grown ass people trying to make money right now. I will say, um, 
unbiasedly because I'm on the show right now. Right. Uh, I think you, I think you put out the best show. I think you put out the best show for sure. Um, and I, and I think that because of something we were talking about earlier, commitment, I think you're hundred percent in. committed to this. You're into it. I don't fuck around. I don't, I don't think you were, you were 110% in, in the very beginning, No. but you are a hundred percent. 110 percent in right now and yeah. it shows dude your production is great these mics like the investment driving out here doing everything you did dude is phenomenal this is all the stuff that like adam and i talked about that yeah. we never did but you motherfuckers got nine to fives man yeah you dude guys, you, you, guys, know? you guys are real working motherfuckers and yeah that's why i respect you adam i mean adam works for bank of america <laughs> yeah dude adam the fuck adam's is, a grinder adam is a fucking player yeah dude bro. adam act like i don't really have I pretend I have but a job. Still, no, but you do have a job. Yeah, dude. This is an office. Like, you yeah. do have, like, I saw notes, motherfucker. Yeah, you, do, you are, there are numbers. Okay? I, I do bullshit. Yeah, I do, I do some bullshit. But, you know, like, I, I'm my boss is the difference. Right. You know, but I enjoyed Reptiles Unplugged. And I blame, because I'm on here and Adam can't defend himself, though I am representing him. Yeah. Uh, I blame Adam, man. If Adam wants to do Reptiles Unplugged again, I'll do it. You know? Man. But, dude, what I'm going to say is it's a it's a grind. This is a grind. Yeah. You know? Finding people to talk to, committing yourself to this conversation for this amount of time is difficult. My, my thing is also, though, is like, you know, as much as, dude, I'm, I'm trying not to be a snob about this. I respect that there's so many Reptile podcasts out there, but people should really care about who they're bringing on. And what I mean by that, like, Joel, you don't think I was fucking already organically amped up to have a one-on-one -on -one with you? you yeah, you, dude. You know how many I think, fucking things in my mind? But that's like, like bias, dude. Like, I'm oh. like biasly thinking, dude, it, we're going to have so much fun. I'm pumped. But, like, I've been looking forward to you coming here. But people should go, Weeks, dude. go get guests like that. Weeks. Like, go fucking get people who are you're, that you're so excited to talk about where, like, you have a great episode like this. Right, It doesn't right, right. have to be dry. Right, yeah, I agree. But what happens I agree. people bring... They try to bring other people on that other people want to see. Yeah. But what's your yeah. relationship to that person? Gross. You even fucking yeah. know that guy? Yeah, dude. So it helps. I don't know. It, it helps. Hel it helps when you know people, man. It really yeah. does. Yeah. Listen, I gotta say, reptiles unplugged. I see it coming back. I can't wait. Maybe bring MJ back. We'll see. Yeah, dude. Maybe maybe we do a trifecta. Adam, you're in my heart, bro. Adam, Heather, I love you guys. Um, dude, they're fantastic people, man. Really they're fantastic, fantastic people, people. I gotta say. Um, let's get these hot seat questions in for my boy Joel. Uh, God damn, these three hours went by quick, bro. Holy shit. Cheers to that. Guys, not too late to get the likes up for my boy Joel. Even though the lights are pretty up right now, I'm not going to lie. Get the likes up. Subscribe. Hotty questions. Yeah, Pico. State Pico's 48. been in here the whole time. Appreciate it. State 40. Oh, dude, Pico Python dude, is a sweetheart. Dude, I'm going to tell you right now. She is so she sick. has been, so sick, bro. Dude, she's came into the hobby, and I feel like put more work in than most people. Lindsay, like you're trying coming to, on this show, Lindsay, hit me up. Yeah, I'm saying, I want to know I'm your you right dog now. training techniques, and I want to talk more about your ball python. I'm project. telling you, she's she's grinding. Let's she's go. Grinding. Let's go. Hot seat questions, Joel. State 48. You ready for these, Joel? Off. Oh, I'm born always. All right, here we go. Coming in hot. Frozen thought alive. Here we go. Frozen thought alive. Oh, frozen thought alive. Uh, we're live now. A cut or no cut? Pip day cut. I said a cut or no cut. So cut, I guess, technically. What day? Pip day. Red chondro. <laughs> red chondro neo or yellow chondro neo? God only knows. Probably red. Red sounds cooler. <laughs> favorite codon morph in a ball python? Yellow belly. Least favorite codon morph? Ooh. Wow. I thought I'd be better at this. You can say lesser. <laughs> Oh, is it a codon? I was going to say enhancer, but is it okay. no, no, it's a recessive. Um, let's say uh, spider. Number one double recessive project in the ball python game. DG clown. Okay. Stupid. Respect. Pre first shed meal or post first shed meal? Post. To spray a ball python or to never spray a ball python? Oh, with water? Yeah, like spray. Oh, mist. I spray the shit out of my snakes. Yeah. Yay sports or boo sports? Yay sports? Yeah. Or boo? Yay sports or boo sports? Oh, yay. Favorite sport? <laughs> motocross. <laughs> Favorite motocross rider of all time? Ryan Dungey. 
Really? 100%. Absolutely. Wow. You Number want, two the, on the Cowie? The Diesel. Number two on the Cowie? Villapoto, fuck Villapoto. The Diesel. Oh, I was thinking, I was, wait, wait, what'd you say again? Jeremy McGrath? You said I was, Jeremy? Oh, I said Villapoto. Villapoto was two when Ryan Dudley Okay, was right, right, okay, yeah, right, yeah, right, right, yeah, right, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, so I got confused. Big flexor, no flexor. Yeah, dude. You know what? I've been on this show before, and and I said no flex, and you're like, fuck you, you flex, dude. So I'm just going to say flex, dude. Red wine or white wine? Red. Steak or fish? Steak. Van Halen or Sammy Hagar? Van Halen. Kawasaki or Yamaha? Yamaha right now, yeah. <laughs> if you asked me like four or five years ago, Kawasaki. Okay. <laughs> Little word association. First thing to come to mind when I mention this breeder. You ready? Hmm. Ozzy Boyd's. Dependable. Miguel Garcia. Influential. Matt Byron. Amazing. Nick Soul. <laughs> <laughs> Sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Summers. <laughs> Worse. <laughs> oh. If you had to delete one big dog out of the game. Hmm. And I don't mean entirely, but just like for the year 2023, if you had to delete one of these big dogs out of the 2023 race, is it going to be? Well, if it depends on Gene Puzzle. If we're talking about puzzles, Will Morrow's for sure. Oh, he shit! Easily, yeah! easily has me beat in every aspect. So, yeah, dude, if he couldn't produce puzzles for this year, I think I might have a chance to catch him up. Yeah! <laughs> Holy shit. How many people we got watching right now? 56. 56? Hey, bro, we had what? How many? Over, we had like over 70. 75. Okay, we had over 75 people tapped in for tonight's episode, bro. <laughs> what do you have to say to all your supporters? Everyone who loved hearing from you. Everyone who's fucking with State 48, bro. What do you have to say to everyone out there? Man, gratitude isn't enough. You know, like this is crazy. I can't I can't imagine anybody even wants to show up. They had to have showed up for MJ. So I, I, I truly appreciate everybody's time, man, because this is – you know, this has been a stint, so uh, but I had a great time, dude. I could keep talking, to be honest. So this has been a lot of fun, man. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you guys so, so much for sticking it out. And uh, as it turns out, you know, ball python recession or not, buy snakes, right? If it's what you like, who gives a shit what everybody's saying? Yep. That's it. Um, at the end of the day, guys, make sure you go give my boy, Joel, State 48 Exotics, a follow on Instagram. Make sure you go subscribe to his YouTube channel, even though he ain't putting shit out. He will at some point. One day. And I will say, last but not least, shout out to the sponsor of this episode, Matt Byram. Ooh. Matt Byram. Matt, yeah. we fuck with you, Matt. We fuck with you, Matt. Thank you so much for your love and support. Go give Matt Byram a follow on Instagram. But guys, that is a wrap. That's all we have on this episode of the Trop Talk Podcast. Matt or excuse me, Joel, thank you so much. Matt, Matthew Summers behind the scenes. Guys, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I'll see you Sunday. That's right, Sunday. The Gecko Breeders fucking podcast going down this Sunday on Trap Talk. Tune in. I'll catch you guys, and we're out. Cheers.